And the charade is all over, isn't it? <laughs> Don't leave anything in the dressing room, boys. Bring it all to the table because you're going to need it. That's both teams. Well, the Islanders are bringing from their dressing room uniform number 77, and it's on the back of Pierre Turgeon. This was just a few moments ago. Turgeon with his back to you. That's Mario looking at you. He's definitely in the lineup. He's starting for Pittsburgh. How much we see Pierre Turgeon becomes another story. How healthy is he? Healthy enough to play in the deciding game for the Patrick Division title. Inspirational, I would have to think, somewhat for the players to see him back in the lineup, Jiggs. He means a lot just being on the bench. We won't know how much Al Harbour's going to use him, but he'll have him available, probably for the power play, which has been stuck between floors for most of the playoffs, although it seemed to be loosening up in game six. Now for Mike Muffler here, the rest of the story for the New York Islanders. This is seventh heaven to get to this point of the playoff series, to get here, and you think of all the months of work to reach this point. Now they have to seize the moment. Fearless is point two. They've shown a little respect, but they're not in total awe. Taking the body is another way to go about tonight's game. And survival, the opening blitz, that they can get by the first couple of minutes and then, more importantly, get by the first period and still be in good shape. Who knows what may happen from there on. When you think of the blitz, Jags, number three that you were talking about in the stories, in reality, this start of this particular hockey game is like overtime. It's just not sudden death. The Islanders have to bring their most and best to the table. Pittsburgh's going to do the same, and away they go. For Pittsburgh, for Meineke Muffler as well, here is the story of the Berg and the Penguins. Point one, the pressure. This is their series. This is their building. This is their city, but the pressure is on them. They've been here before, a seventh game with Washington a year ago, a seventh against New Jersey two years ago. How many does it take? We're talking goals. Twice now, they have seen... The team get five goals on Glenn Healy, and that's not enough to win. And that's not like a Scotty Bowman coach team to get five and not win. And point three, Tommy, be good or else. And Tom Barrasso has given up 15 goals against in the last three games. Has to be at the top of his game for Pittsburgh to have any shot. I think the third one here also, Jiggs. Tom Barrasso, the Islanders have been getting to him. They've been talking to him. They've been shooting pucks at him. They're making contact with him, and it's upsetting Tom Barrasso. He doesn't like things not to go his way. A little snarly here this morning. Here is the series story brought to you by Payne Weber, who believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. The Islanders won the opening game. Pittsburgh came back and won a pair. The Islanders win one. Pittsburgh won Islanders. And we'll be ready for game seven to decide it all from downtown Pittsburgh right after these words. Out on the ice, the Montreal Canadiens are awaiting the winner of this game tonight for the championship round. What's the key to decide who plays Montreal, Ed? Pierre Turgeon right now is going to have a lot to do with the Islanders and their outcome of this hockey game. There's some people think that there may be a reverse psychology in all of this with Turgeon in the lineup. Maybe some of the players let up a little bit that have been under some strain trying to keep the game level up there. I hope that doesn't happen for the Islanders. It'll depend, I suppose, on how well he feels himself and how well his arm reacts and does Pittsburgh go after him? The Islanders are out on the ice. The Penguins are just now arriving. You know what the Coliseum has been like the last few games? How about here? Stan Fischler is in amongst the folks down in the seats. What's it like, Stan? Well, Jigs, the three Ds are operating now. The three Ds are delirium, which you hear. There was despair at the beginning because the fans couldn't believe the Penguins got themselves in this seven-game situation. And, of course, there is a lot of determination in the fans. They were cheering, let's go Pens, when they came out for the warm-up. So those are the three Ds. Some very interesting reactions in the stands. I was walking around. There actually is a group of Islander fans here, led by Carlo Pinnell. He's from West Babylon. They've been carrying around a New York Islander banner. There's another fan here from the Upper West Side, Vinnie Riley, who played roller hockey with the Mullen brothers, Brian and Joey, and he told me that at the end of the game, he's gonna hang up a Mullen banner. In today's Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, there was a column by Ron Cook, which got a lot of people angry, and Ron Cook said if the Penguins lose this hockey game, that they would be chokers, and that angered a lot of people, including Tom Rich, who happens to be the uh, agent for, for uh, uh, Mario Lemieux. Okay, Jigs, take it away. All right, Stan. Yeah, the pressure is on in Pittsburgh. All the cliches have been dusted off in the opening face-off of Game 7 for the Patrick Division Championship is just around the corner. We'll be back after this.
Jeff Jimerson has just completed his rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. This crowd is not ready to settle back into their seats just yet. One more dry gel, one more roll aid, whatever it is that settles you, and we'll be ready. We're ready right now to check out our goaltending matchup. Glenn Healy will make his 13th straight start for the Islanders. Only Patrick Waugh, Ruah, if you will, has more wins in the playoffs than Glenn Healy. Healy has seven, Waugh has eight. And no surprise, Tom Barrasso with a series goals against average of 3.19 is in the nets for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Down to our right, senior officiating staff, Andy Van Helleman, referees. Ray Scapinello and Swede Knox weren't the lines, and immediately Brad Delgarno comes up poking at Kevin Stevens. Delgarno got roughed up. Stevens went right to him from the drop of the puck, and referee Van Helleman, six seconds into the game, is headed for the penalty box. I think he's got them both, Jakes. He tapped Kevin Stevens. Stevens wasn't looking. I believe he may have him for holding. Del Garno just often drilled Kevin Stevens as he was on the ice. There's the two of them. They lock up at the drop of the puck to start the game. Look at this, bang. No one wants to give anybody the edge. No one's gonna try and take an edge. Two minutes for roughing. Pittsburgh penalty. Number 25, Kevin Stevens. Two minutes for holding. Holding Tyler. is the call on Kevin Stevens. Roughing for Brad Delgarno. Andy Van Helleman, refereeing tonight, holds the record for the most playoff games worked by a referee. This is his 18th consecutive Stanley Cup Championship Series. And he immediately gets Stevens and Delgarno off the ice. Well, it's four on four hockey. Tommy Fitzgerald winning the draw. He's out with Claude Loisel. Darius Kasparaitis, you might expect it, booed roundly when the team came out and the introductions made. Here's Mario Lemieux centering, but behind Francis, and Loisel takes over. Claude Loisel dropped it off. Kasparaitis hears it from the crowd as he moves it on to Pilon. Into the middle with Loisel. Pilon gets checked, and Mario Lemieux banks it down the boards out of the reach of Francis. Healy to play it toward the corner. Well, we've gone by the 19-second mark without a goal, and Ramsey without the puck at the line. Failed to keep it in. 40 seconds is gone. Murphy checked by Brian Mullen. Murphy got it right back. Laid it up to Mario Lemieux. Across to Joey Mullen. Gets it on the stick, and then Pilon steps into him. Healy dumps it around behind the goal, and getting onto the puck now is Kasparaitis. Backhands it out of the zone. Away from Brian Mullen, as it turns out. So Shell Samuelson sets up for Pittsburgh, giving it to Ulf. Back to Shell. They're not related. Shell, long pass to Joey Mullen, picked off by Hogue. On to Brian Mullen. He shoots from just inside the line, and that hit off Samuelson. Play called in the offside anyway. A minute and 11 seconds into the opening period. Glenn Healy has a broken stick, Jiggs. He broke the handle of his goal stick, and he's going to get another one. Dennis Vasky helping him as we get a look at Tom Barrasso. There's Glenn Healy and his new goal stick. You don't see goal sticks break that far. Halfway from where the fat part of the goal stick, the handle of the stick, it broke halfway up the handle, which is unusual. He had a collision with Mullen. Mullen trying to get to a puck behind the net. Not sure whether he broke it on the collision or not. Now the faceoff at the Pittsburgh line. I didn't see what happened unless he was whacking at the puck or trying to move it. 55 seconds, by the way, remaining in the double penalties to Delgarno and Stevens. Penguins start from deep in their own zone. That's Hogue in forechecking along with Brian Mullen. Yell Samuelson. On to Wolf Samuelson. Off the boards and at center ice, it'll be taken by Vladimir Molikov. Molikov and Vasky on defense. The pass out to Hogue. Left it there. Up steps Molikov. Dumps it in. Barrasso lets it go around the boards toward Shell Samuelson. Mullen pinched in on him and Shell Samuelson there's it down into the Islander zone. Icing is waved off as Molikov handles the puck. Down the left side, cuts to the right. Out away from the check of Lemieux, fires from the point, and Barrasso makes the stop. In after the loose puck is Benoit Ho, got checked. Yager reaches back for it. Two minutes gone at the start of the opening period. Yager to center ice, into the Islander zone. Three Islanders stretched out. Yager moves in around, back of the net. Takes a look at Ramsey at the blue line, then backhanded one that steered aside, and Claude Loisel clears the puck out of the zone. He took a hit from Stevens. 
Aims at full and equal strength. There is no score. Murphy shoots the puck into the Islander zone. Healy leaves it back in the net for Kasparaitis. There is Kasparaitis to Fitzgerald. It went off his skates. Ramsey out at center to Murphy, and it's shot right back in. Chasing it is Kevin Stevens. Going to the net is Tockett. There's a shot turned aside by Healy as Ramsey delivered from the blue line. Now it's Loisel with a feed to Delgarno as Jack. Fitzgerald can't get a stick on it. Here's Lemieux over the line. Mario shoots. Healy a skate save, and the puck comes to the right wing for Delgarno. He's able to clear it off Samuelson, feeds Murphy. The Penguins shoot it right back in. Now maybe it's time for their blitz to get started. Stevens centers. Loisel is there. On to Fitzgerald to Delgarno on right wing. He dumps it in from center, and the Islanders change up. Penguins start to change as well. Peter Taglianetti, a long pass. That goes through Francis. It's loose in the Islander zone. Huey Krupp puts a stick on it, and the Penguins are called for having iced it. Early in the opening period, there is no score. Control the puck. Gervers puts it in front. Look what off. King stick. Back to Krupp. A shot up the point is blocked. Up the slot, I should say, from the point. Francis dumps it down, and the Islanders will send Tom Curvers after it. Icing against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Three and a half minutes gone at the start of this opening period. You had to look for the Pittsburgh Penguins to start this hockey game with as good a flurry as they could. Scotty Bowman wanted to see his team jump all over the Islanders, but the Islanders were ready for them. They didn't just back up. Look at the expressions of Scotty Bowman behind the bench. Generally, you do not see him get that excited. He's got Yager now going out onto the ice. Scotty has done some job with the media, convincing the fans through the media that they've had the short end of the officiating, that the reason this series is 3-3 is that they're just not getting any breaks, and this dirty Islander team is taking advantage of all kinds of situations. The Islanders win the draw. Molokov shot is grabbed and held by Barrasso. That's what Scotty Bowman tells the press jigs, and of course that's what the fans get to read and understand and feel that that's what it is. But if you talk to him privately, he doesn't say the same things. No, he is a master. Master manipulator of the press, yeah. learned where? In Montreal, of course. <laughs> All got the draw, the puck went to the corner. Old Samuelson protected it as Thomas went in. And Taglianetti clears the zone. Molokov to Steve Thomas over the line on left wing. Tried to center. It was out of the reach of Mullen. And outside the line, moving up the left side is Jeff Daniels into the Islander zone. Daniels shoots Healy the save. Francis goes in after the puck. Hogue ties him up. And while Hogue is able to get a step on Francis, moved it to Brian Mullen. And down the ice it goes. Thomas will go in after it. Barrasso out to handle it here for Pittsburgh. To Walt Samuelson, check back of the net. And then Mullen got checked by the net, and the Penguins regained control. Francis to Daniels, right side to Yager. Moves in on Kasparaitis, lost the puck, gets to it. Weak backhander right to Healy. Headed off towards Steve Thomas. The hold over on the left side. The Penguins are out shooting the Islanders 5-2 at the beginning of this game. They played four and a half minutes of the first period. This is Darius Kasparaitis. Ariel Lemieux trying to flush him from back of the net. Puck comes outside the line, and Shell Samuelson waits, then shoots it back in. Healy moves out to play it. Up off the boards toward Brian Mullen. He dumps it through center and slowly onto the Pittsburgh zone. Grant Jennings handles it down. Right side, Tockett tips it into the Islander zone. Lemieux, Tockett, and Stevens move in, and a call here. Big hit on Stevens. Pilon caught him. Wow, what a collision. Stevens was going after Richard Pilon. Pilon saw him at the last minute. Look at Stevens. He has trouble trying to get up. What a collision. Stevens is bleeding. Must have been the shoulder. Uh, now they're calling for Dr. Burke. Here's another look at it. Boom. Wow, head on head. I might. It might have been the helmets. Oh, look at how Stevens landed as if he was out cold when he hit the ice. Let's take another look. Pilar, Stevens, they both wanted to hit like two budding rams. Boom. Pilar gets up. Stevens, not yet. There's another look at it. Watch Pilar. He knows he's coming. Goes for the puck, then braces for the collision. That's two big, strong bodies colliding. See some blood down on the ice, so I'd have to think that the snapping of the helmets 
into each other's faces. Look at the, watch Stevens here. Oh, he landed face first. He was out cold when he hit the ice. That may have been, that's when he got cut. It wasn't the collision that cut him, it's when he fell. What an ugly sight. Oh man, Dr. Charles Burke, the team physician. You've heard Dr. Burke quoted. You've probably seen him on television dealing with the Mario Lemieux back problems and more recently, of course, the Hodgkin's disease. Dr. Burke is attending now to Kevin Stevens. There's Rich Pilon. This with 15 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the opening period. More of the signs and signals in a hockey game. The intensity level, it can't be any higher. Exhibited, Stevens goes after Pilon. Pilon sees him coming. Kevin Stevens had been very quiet in this series until the last two games, and he has put up seven points, two goals, five assists in the last couple of games. Overall, he's right behind Mario with 16 points, five goals, 11 assists in the playoffs of 93. They're trying to probably see if they can make them make some sense. They ask silly questions when you're in the situation. You can see there's been quite a bit of blood that come out of him, and that had to be when he fell to the ice. He was unconscious when he hit the ice. It looks as though it's his nose. He's actually going to be asking questions after they finish asking him so that they can ascertain just at what degree is he conscious. Then he'll start to ask them questions. That, that'll happen. He started to get a little talkative. No stick involved in this. It's the major league collision, and now the gurney is being brought out on the ice from the far end, the opposite end of the arena from where the Pittsburgh dressing room is located. What he's doing now, Jake, he's probably asking the doctor, you know, what happened to me or what, what seems to be wrong here. And, and you see him patting him on the back. He's gaining a little more consciousness. But there's no question when that collision was made, he was out cold when he hit the ice. He won't. He'll be reluctant about getting onto that stretcher. There, he would sooner go off under his own power. He's in a corner just on the opposite side of the ice from the exit and entrance to the dressing room. But the doctor will probably, he will probably make that decision. They're dropping the stretcher down now and it looks as though, yeah, now he's, they're gonna, they're gonna take him off. That's too bad. He's holding his head up. You see the way he's positioned himself? That's hard to do to it. Generally, they'll try and put something under his head here. You would think, get a glove. Usually, they take one of the player's gloves. Here's the collision again from ice level. Boom. Look at the bodies as they twist and mangle when they collide. And to knock Richard Pilon backwards that way, it had to be a tremendous force. And while you look at the replay again, referee Van Hellebud has just released both teams from their respective players' benches to limber up to stay loose. They're skating around. Richard Pilon and the rest of the Islanders zone to our left and to the right. The Penguins, except for a couple of players who are still on the bench, are staying loose. And Kevin Stevens is anything but loose at this moment. He's probably in a state of shock, and they don't want to take any chances on letting him get up on his feet. The other thing is if he gets up on his feet and can't make it, then he, the players supporting him would have to all but carry him off the ice. They'll probably take him into the dressing room. The doctor has a pretty good feel for what may be the problem. You can see his face around his nose and his mouth. That's where he fell to the ice. A nice ovation for number 25, left winger Kevin Stevens. And always a reluctance, too, because the fans don't understand. They don't know what's wrong with them. We don't know what's wrong with them. We can only hope that it is just what you see, maybe a laceration to the, to the nose, the mouth area. Craig Patrick, the general manager. You know, that, when you think about it, there was an icing going on. That was all done on an icing. Mario Lemieux has to be concerned, losing his left winger. This was a one of the shots that Glenn Healy was faced with. Mario Lemieux, Lemieux, excuse me, with a fine wrist shot. Healy with a good angle on him, well out of the net. 
Right now, the Islanders being outshot five to two. Played four minutes and 50 seconds of the first period. It was at the beginning, Del Garno and Stevens got into it. Del Garno punched Stevens after Stevens dragged him to the ice with a hold. And then the collision with Richard Pilaw. Kevin Stevens in the dressing room. Oh, as we get set for a face-off in the Pittsburgh zone, Tom Fitzgerald is out with Loisel and Del Garno. Elon and Casper Reitus, the defense pairing. Ron Francis, it's in the middle. Ariel Lemieux and Rick Tockett are out for the Penguins with Murphy and Ramsey, their defense combination. Another doctor is being paged to report to the Penguin dressing room to join Dr. Burke. Pittsburgh out of the zone, passes to Tockett on the left side. Pilon chases him off the puck, forced him back of the net. Richard Pilon and Tockett right back on one another. Francis centers, that's tipped wide by Lemieux. Ely down in the goal mouth, the Islanders up with the puck here. Casper Wright is backhands it out of the zone, and the Penguins have to chase it. Didn't take long for Pilon and Tockett to meet. Now Ramsey with a long pass. Tockett looks up. There's Kasparaitis in his face, and there's going to be a penalty as the Penguins get over the line. Referee Van Helleman points toward Tockett, and a elbowing penalty being signaled by the veteran referee. Right away, J.J., you have to like the Islanders' opportunities here, not just because they're going to get a power play and possibly the appearance, first time since the injury to Pierre Turgeon. But psychologically, the Islanders have Pittsburgh doing things that they don't normally do. Kevin Stevens taking a run at Richard Pilon. And now you got Tockett trying to take the head off Darius Kasparitis with an elbow. And out comes number 77. Pierre Turgeon will be centering for Benoit Hogue and Steve Thomas as you continue to look at Rick Tockett, an elbowing penalty at the 525 mark. Whoa, look at the hands, elbows, everything up on Darius Kasparaitis. There was no question the arm of the referee up immediately. In this series, the Islanders with five power play goals on 31 chances against the Penguins. Hogue takes the draw. Turgeon is on the left side. He'll probably shift into the center ice area to handle the puck now, though he does turn and go down left wing as Curvers brings it to center ice and shoots it in. Off for Rosso, it'll go to Hogue. Erjan fell in the corner. The puck comes back to Tom Kervers. To Molokov for a shot that would wide. Bounce right out in front. There's Thomas, but he can't get a shot off. And Tippett has dumped it down the ice. 25 seconds remaining in the penalty against Tockett. Watch Terjean. Turns, goes up left wing. The pass up the middle to Hogue. And while Hogue dumps it in, Terjean goes in after it. Barrasso will play it here around the boards. It hit Hogue. Came back to Molokov. Can't kick it in too deep. Steve Thomas got bumped around in his pursuit of the puck, and it comes outside the Pittsburgh blue line. One minute, 14 seconds in the power play. Kervers to Molokov. Vladimir Molokov on to Tom Kervers. Steps over center ice, flips it in. Barrasso to handle it. Little miscommunication. Turgeon put it to the side of the net. Here's Francis. On Francis with Lemieux going up the middle. He's got the puck. On goal, off the pipe. Mario, short-handed, misses, back come the Islanders. Molokov across the line, fed it to the right side, but didn't get it to Turgeon in time. Murphy puts it back in the net. Francis shoots it down the ice, and Mario Lemieux will go racing in, but Healy up to play it here. 35 seconds in the power play. Huey Krupp sets up back in the net. Ferraro goes to the left. Vasky comes up the right along with King. It's Krupp close to that side. The pass to Vasky, and he's dumped it in. Thomas and Ferraro went after it. Del Samuelson plays it off the boards and right to Tippett. Out towards center ice, looking at Krupp as he shoots it into the Islanders' zone. Healy will drop it off for Vasky. The Islanders have not generated a shot on goal with this bad advantage. And they're down to the final seven seconds. No score in the game. Ferraro's over the line. Three Penguins went to him. Krupp puts it back in the net. Ferraro didn't play it. Delgarno got it out in front, but behind King as it turns out. Pocket is out of the box. They go to the right side for Loney. Roy Loney taken to the corner by Krupp. He put it in front. Healy makes the save. The rebound. Shell Samuelson shot it off. Derek King. Now a delayed penalty call coming. It's against the Islanders. And as they pin the puck on the boards, an interference penalty sets up the Pittsburgh power play right after this. Pittsburgh successfully kill off the penalty. Dennis Vasky takes an interference penalty. 
And Mario Lemieux feeds the puck back. Shell Samuelson puts it in front off Casper Reitison just wide. Tockett moves it around to the near boards. Lemieux sets up Murphy. To Lemieux through him. Tockett with Francis going back in the net. Francis handling the puck here. All three forwards back in the goal line. Francis turns. Looks to the point man that went in deeper to Tockett. On to Lemieux. To the blue line for Murphy. Back to Mario Lemieux. Goes cross ice. Shell Samuelson shot didn't get through Kasparaitis and it shot out of there and down the ice by Benoit Hull. 40 seconds gone at the beginning of the penalty to Vasky. Murphy to Francis is over the line. Turns on Yui Krupp. Krupp checks him and Claude Loisel clears it out. Shell Samuelson works it across to Murphy. Murphy takes a look, decides to shoot it in. Mario Lemieux in after it. It went to Francis and he shot it wide. Tocken and Hull go to the corner and the puck into the skates of Murphy over on the left wing boards. Back to Francis. Francis centers. Here's Lemieux and Tocken is robbed by Healy. What a nice setup for the Penguins and Glenn Healy takes it away. Beautiful timing by Glenn Healy from directly in front on top of his goal crease. Tocken deflected a shot or a pass, I should say, from Mario Lemieux. And Glenn Healy somehow was able to do the right guessing because here comes the puck. There's the shot by Tockett. Healy with a nice stop, and he's able to control the rebound. Take another look from up above. Watch directly in front. There's the shovel shot by Tockett, and what a stop by Glenn Healy. Watch the setup. Down in this lower left-hand corner, you'll see Lemieux move out just to the right of the net on the near side. There's Lemieux. There's the pass. There's the shovel shot by Tockett. How quickly they move the puck. Now in the drop, the Penguins had control. They keep it in at the line. Krupp to Fitzgerald, and out of the zone it goes. 43 seconds left in the penalty to Vasky. Joey Mullen tight on the left wing boards. Dumps it in deeper through Healy. Here's Jogger getting to the puck. Needs the point. That's Murphy to Samuelson. Paul Samuelson goes deeper through Joey Mullen to Yager. Dragged it off to the side of the net and couldn't get any further. Kasparaitis around the boards, but held by Murphy. Through Yager. Lemieux chipped it back to Yarmer Yager. Joey Mullen waiting on the near side of the ice. Lemieux trying to find a way to get it to him. Gave it to Murphy for a shot that's blocked. Comes back. Paul Samuelson all the way around to Lemieux with eight seconds in the power play for the Penguins. Back to Murphy from the blue line. Back it goes, Lemieux to Murphy, shoots, that went wide. Ariel Lemieux's got it, laid it right out in front. Ulf Samuelson delivers, Healy the save. The rebound from Yager was chipped high and wide. Teams at six aside, Krupp took Yager down. Battle for it on the end boards, a scramble here, and the puck has been frozen. Joey Mullen comes up swinging at Claude Loisel, then swinging at Kasparaitis. The Penguins... Showing some frustration here. Not able to score with four shots on goal on the power play, Ed. Some pretty good ones when you think of the play. Lemieux to Tockett. And then the exchange, the give and go to Murphy. Murphy had moved in low. There's the shot by Alf Samuelson. That got through. Healy made the stop. Yager in pursuit of the puck. That was the stoppage of play and the hammering. Here's the exchange back and forth to Larry Murphy from Mario Lemieux. There's the low hard shot. Beauty deflected in front of Glenn Healy. That went off the glass to the left of the net. Your right as you're looking in from behind Larry Murphy. Two minutes for cross checking. Pittsburgh penalty. Number seven, Joe Mullen. Two minutes for high sticking. Joey Mullen for high sticking. Darius Kasparitis for a cross check. These penalties called at the 9.56 mark of the opening period, so it's back to four-on-four four hockey. It's only the third minor penalty that Joey Mullen has picked up throughout the playoffs. Ron Francis has come out to take the face off against Claude Loisel. That's Benoit Hogue, who is on the far side. Vasky and Molokov, the defense bearing for the Islanders. Two Samuelsons for Pittsburgh. McEachern is their other forward. Loisel wins the draw from Francis. David Domolikoff had trouble finding it. Todd Loisel reaches in, lost it. It comes to the front of the net. McEachern's backhander is turned aside by Healy. Shell Samuelson holds it. Then to Walt. Walt Samuelson works it around the end boards to McEachern. Molikoff takes him to the boards. McEachern shaking the check. Molikoff is on him again. Again, they tie it up. 
That's still in play. Vasky pinching in. Molokov shakes the work of McEachern and starts out. Three Islanders move up. Now four. The pass to Hull. Get off the right wing boards. Holds the puck. Looks to make the play. And while Hull cross ice. Got it through, but outside the line. And Vasky gives it to Vladimir Molokov. Steve Thomas has come out. Hogue takes the puck at the Islander blue line. Gave it to Thomas. Can't get through Dave Tippett. Hogue over to check Tippett. Following through is all Samuelson. Back to Shell. Big Shell Samuelson. Once more to Wolf Samuelson. And back into Shell. Nine minutes remaining in the scoreless first period. 54 seconds in the penalties. Shell Samuelson flips it in. And gets a hold of Vasky, but Proop is there. Moved it on towards Steve Thomas. To the right wing boards, Fitzgerald couldn't get it out. It jumped away. Here's Mario Lemieux closing it on goal. Is checked by Thomas. Got it again, and Healy makes a pad save. Big drive here from Ramsey is turned aside. The puck comes to the corner. Mike Ramsey into Mario Lemieux, but Proop stepped in to steal it, and the Islanders will get it out of the zone. Proop steps over center and dumps it down. Rosso to play it. Let it go as it turns out, and we have 19 seconds left in those matching penalties to Kasparitis and Joey Mullen. Steve Thomas, back to Molokov. Vladimir Molokov, long pass to the right wing boards, out of the reach of Delgarno, went right to Barrasso, on to Murphy's stick. Harry Murphy waiting for Yager to turn and go up the right side. The passing lane was taken away. Now Taka turns and goes up the right. Yager came to the left, and Molokov pinched in to knock it away. Murphy checked by Ferraro. Play Ferraro. Lost it. Larry Murphy from back of the net to the right side to Tockett. Right back through Yager. Molokov gets to it at the Islander blue line. Gave it to Ray Ferraro. Brought it back in. Ran into Yager. And an offside is called against the Pittsburgh Penguins. You're watching the Penguins of the Islanders. The championship game to be decided tonight in the Patrick Division. Play underway as the Islanders get into the Pittsburgh zone. Darius Kasparitis with the puck centered. Francis intercepted and cleared it down the ice. Derek King comes back. Teams are at six aside, including the goaltenders. Too much of this first period has been played in the Islanders zone. They've been outshot 13 to 2. Really haven't had any sustained action in the Pittsburgh end of the ice yet. No, they haven't, Jags, and the Islanders are going to have to pick up their pace just a little bit higher. Now Derek King has dumped it in. Steve Junker in after it. Junker wears number 17. Here's Ferraro. He's bumped on the boards. The puck comes loose. Derry King checked by Yager. Daniels knocked down as he tried to get it out of the zone. The fans here want a penalty. And Pervers, in the meantime, fires a low shot that's handled by Barrasso. Puts it on the end boards. Ferraro stole it to Thomas. And what a big save there by Barrasso. Finally, the editors get something set up in the Pittsburgh zone. Ferraro ripped up by Loney. Down on his knees to make the play. Back in the net is Thomas. Steve Thomas plays it to the left wing boards. Kerbers unloads, didn't get it through, and out come the Penguins two on one. Joey Mullen across the line with Straka. The pass intercepted, cleared out of there by Krupp to Thomas. To Brian Mullen who's over the line. Ferraro goes to the front of the net. Mullen can't get the puck to him. Comes back to Molokov from the blue line. The save made by Barrasso. Islanders doing just that, Jake. They're trying to pick up the pace a little bit. They're getting some scoring chances. What a chance for Steve Thomas. Beautiful pass. In close. He tried to jam it in quickly. Barrasso got hung up, changed his mind. It was Ferrero. Grabbed the puck. There's the pass. The shot. Excuse me. The shot. Good stop. The hardest stop of the game so far for Tom Barrasso. Easy to figure. It's only been the fifth shot the Islanders have had on him in the hockey game so far. Day in and day out at home or on the road, you can always count on the great taste of Bud Light. It won't fill you up, never lets you down, so make it a Bud Light. Hogue is out with Mullen and Thomas. Molokov and Vasky on defense. Face off to the left of Barrasso is won by Francis. Ulf Samuelson dropped it back to Peter Taglianetti and the Islanders change up here. Thomas and Hold come off. Out go Delgarno, Fitzgerald, and Loisel as the Penguins dump it in. Doubling to the deck is Tockett. Play allowed to continue, but now a call made by the linesman. I think I believe was the call, Jiggs. Pittsburgh unloaded it before they got to the center line. Ray Scampanello trying to get in. Squeezed along the boards. Got his arm in the air. 
Mario Lemieux. These games are made for players such as Mario Lemieux. Can he rise up and do what everybody thinks that he's supposed to do? That's what we're here to see. Claude Loisel on the ice trying to make sure that Mario Lemieux does not do what he's best at. The Islanders can't get away with stick checking Mario Lemieux. They've got to play the body on him. We saw that a little while ago. A couple of the Islanders made moves at Lemieux trying to take the puck off his stick and he ended up getting a backhand shot on Glenn Healy. Tommy Fitzgerald means in to take the face off with Francis. Fitzgerald won it. Loisel, the pilon, his shot turned aside. Francis and Fitzgerald got tangled up in front of the net and Murphy comes to center and dumps it into the Islander end. Rick Tockett and another hit with Pilon. Long shot here by McEachern went wide. McEachern has taken the left wing spot normally occupied by Kevin Stevens on this line. He missed the injury to Stevens. He has been taken to the Pittsburgh dressing room. Puck over the boards and into the Islander bench. Five and a half minutes remaining in the opening period. How are you enjoying it here in Pittsburgh, Stanley? Very much, uh, Jiggs. It's a very amiable crowd. My guest at the end of the first period, Sean McEachern. Uh, one of the things I've learned so far, the Pittsburgh players have told me that the ice here in the Igloo was not among the best in the league, but Huey Krupp was the one who took the fall, could have gotten the Islanders into a lot of trouble. Uh, Mario has that long stick, and he seemed to me in a great position to uh, do something with it. Did not. Jiggs? All right, Stan, no score. We said at the outset one of the stories, survival. From an Islander standpoint, surviving the, the blitz that we anticipated at the early part of the game and getting out of the first period in good shape. Well, they've played 14 and a half minutes without a goal against. 14 saves by Glenn Healy and only five, make it six shots at the other end on Tom Barrasso. Tommy Fitzgerald and Lemieux on the draw. Pilon moves the puck to Kasparitis. Steps over the line, fires from the point, and that is tipped. Goes up into the seats. A lot of stoppages of play so far. Not a good flow into the hockey game. The penalties do that. Of course, the players flipping pucks over the boards. That was a deflection. A moment ago, Ramsey ended up dumping one into his bench after someone had lifted one into the Islanders' bench. So Mario Lemieux interrupted jerky ice time. That's in the Islanders' best interest. Don't let the Pittsburgh Penguins dictate the flow of the hockey game. Take the center ice area away from them. They haven't been able to do that. They seem to be doing a little better now than they did in the first 10 minutes of the first period. Looking at Vladimir Balikov, who is on the right side of the Islander defense. Dennis Vasky on the left. Hogue is centering for Steve Thomas and Brian Mullen. Francis in the middle. Jeff Daniels on the left. Yarmer Yager over on the right wing. And again, the puck goes out of play. Want to extend our best wishes for a speedy recovery to Travis Green, not with the team, left behind in Long Island to recover from an eye injury, reportedly uh, blood behind the eye, the contusion uh, far more serious than first suspected in, uh, in game number six. And he's been told the rest not to move for, I believe, six days. But I bandaged. Some thought that Scott Sissions would take his spot in the lineup tonight. Instead, it is Pierre Turgeon, but we've seen him only briefly on an Islander power play. There is no score. Ronnie Francis took a check and gets to center ice. Dumps it into the Islander zone. Healy to play it. Played it away from Francis. Hogue steps in front of him. There's Daniels now. Jeff Daniels with Hogue taking him to the boards. Up steps Molikoff. Gets it to Brian Mullen. Thomas jumping up on the rush. Mullen across the line. Looks to Thomas. Gave it to him, and the shot was turned aside. Rolf Samuelson to Francis, and the Penguins come to center. Yager handles the puck, racing to the right side. Yager chased in deep by Curvers, but he's got it again. Sets up the point man. Jennings, they center. Healy makes a big save there off Lemieux. Ryan Mullen clears it high, but not out of the zone. Shell Samuelson skies it in to Lemieux. Sharp angle shot hit the side of the net. Curvers around a hook through him and outside the blue line. Just over four minutes remaining in the opening period. And Jennings slaps it hard around. Healy cuts it off. It's picked up by Tom Curvers. On to Rich Pilon. Pilon clears the zone. Bouncing it wide at the Pittsburgh net. And we'll get a icing call. Under four minutes remaining. And still, we wait for the opening goal of this game. Just received word that Kevin Stevens will not return. He has a concussion and a cut above the right eye. Not good news. Here's Ramsey up the slot. 
The shot went wide. Delgarno tipped it to the line. Loisel gets it out of the Islanders' zone. Islanders nothing. Penguins nothing. Pittsburgh into the Islanders' zone. The pocket had to chase the puck. Wraps up Kasparitis, and Loisel is able to move it out. Murphy right back to Joey Mullen, who got bumped by Pilon. Delgarno sets up back of the Islander net. And Delgarno using the left wing boards, got it to center ice. Ramsey waits and then shoots it back in. Darius Kasparitis comes out of the left wing corner. Oh, to hit him is Loney. Kasparitis just now recovering his stick after being separated from it. Rich Pilon comes to the center ice strike. Bumped by Mike Needham, but he got the puck to Vonick, who has dumped it in. Volick out with Ferraro and King for the Islanders. Derek King back to Volick into King to the side of the net. Ferraro has to go back in the goal for it. Murphy there to knock it away from him. Up to Mike Needham, who's cleared it out. Under three minutes remaining in the first period. That's Curvers. Got the puck on to King's stick. Now to Volick. David Volick left it. King is across the line. Derek King with a shot that hit the defenseman Ramsey. Bounce to Tippett, and the Penguins clear the zone. Play broken up at center ice, however. David Volick back to Krupp and then across to Curvers. Need him into four check. The Islanders give it to Huey Krupp. Once more to Tom Curvers. Carries it over center ice. Fires a long shot that went wide. Ferraro trying to shake the check of Daniels. Thomas pinches in. King held it at the blue line. Gary King dumps it toward the corner. Peter Taglianetti goes back for Pittsburgh. Taglianetti to the right side for Yager. Cuts into the middle of the ice then shot it off Brian Mullen. Molotov to recover. Sidestep the check from Daniels. Yager is pulled over from behind. There's going to be a penalty. Steve Thomas is going to get the signal from referee Van Helleman. Hey, Islander fans, if you haven't met this guy, you should know him. The pro bear, the lovable, lovable bear that stands over 10. Oh, sure he does, Jake. He's two feet tall. Comes complete with an authentic. Can you imagine a 10? foot bear that we're selling here no it's a two-foot authentic nhl the uniform on this bear stick gloves skates helmet available in all nhl uniform covers and he's yours for just 79.95 plus five dollars shipping you can see the address on your screen order today check for money order we'll get this pro bear just over two feet tall and he is yours for 79.95 plus five dollars shipping or handling he's a white bear tigs and grizzly bears grow to be at least you know in the neighborhood of eight to ten feet on occasion take a look at steve thomas he hit yarmer yager there from behind and you don't do that with andy van helman or any referee now no hitting from behind not that way it's a charging penalty to steve thomas ferraro and daniels here as they get mixed up Ooh, look at the nice little shot a trade-off daniels on ferraro ferraro on daniels they're close in fighting it's not fighting per se, but now I have to use caution when I use words like close in fighting, close in contact. Looking for territory, territorial rights. Second power play for the Penguins. Lemieux fed Murphy back to Lemieux out of his reach, and Pilon shoots it down the ice and bounces right to Barrasso. This is the second power play for the Penguins. They had four shots on goal earlier in the period when Baski went off for interference. Michelle Samuelson, the pocket, who dumped it in. Healy plays it up around the boards toward Benoit Hogue. Through him, through Murphy as well. Tockett points to it, and back goes Shell Samuelson to handle the puck. On to Murphy. Ahead to Mario Lemieux. Puts it in the middle for Francis. Checked by Pilon. Took him to the board solidly. Krupp can't get it out. It's Gerald failed to clear it. Now Mario Lemieux to Murphy to Lemieux. Lemieux off the left wing boards. Everything taken away as far as passing lanes. A pass to Tockett comes out in front. Francis didn't get to it. Healy without a stick reaches out to cover it. His stick got caught up in the mesh just off to the post to his right. Andy Van Helleman pulls it out of there. It's like a fish in a net just now. Yeah, holy mackerel. Like a mackerel caught in a gill net. Healy couldn't get it out, but he dove for the puck. Left the stick behind. Stopped the play. Lemieux looking for the loose puck. Beaten to it by Healy. Er, let's see, a minute and seven seconds left in the penalty, a minute and seven seconds left in the period. There's the play, there's Healy, no chances. Don't want to gamble with the loose puck around the net, and Mario Lemieux coaching. It's Gerald up, duels Lemieux on the faceoff, the puck held. 
Walt Samuelson moves it in off the boards. Lemieux gets it back to Walt Samuelson. His pass is into Lloyd's L. Skates, and he's cleared the zone. He passed the 19-minute mark of the opening period. The Penguins into the Islander zone. Joey Mullen taken off. His skates by Molikoff. Murphy jumps up. They center her to Lemieux, and it didn't get a stick on it. Larry Murphy with Joey Mullen, or Brian Mullen, excuse me, on him. And now the play called, and we've got an injured Naramer Yager. You see both gloves laying on the ice and the stick. Yager is down in the corner behind the linesman. There he is. I believe he got either hit with a puck or a high stick. No one seemed to know what happened to him. Mario Lemieux and the trainer there. I didn't see it. The puck was over in the far side of the ice. I had no idea who it was who was down here until he saw Yarmer Yager sitting on the deck. Holding his nose, holding his ear. Don't see any signs of blood on the towel, but let's take a look. That's, here's, oh, I see. Vasky got the stick up in his face. That was Joey Mullen trying to fight off a check by Molikov. Right there. Watch Yager bend over. He's by the, there. Is he heading into the corner now? You see the stick? and gloves on the ice. Pittsburgh looking for a penalty. I guess no one saw it. Yager, he's heading off the ice. 43 seconds remaining in the first period. Kevin Stevens, who was in a collision with Richard Pilon back at the four minute and 50 second mark of the first period, is out of the hockey game. He has a concussion, a cut over his one eye, not available to the team for the rest of the game, rest of this series. The winner tonight faces the Montreal Canadiens. If it's the Islanders, the series opens in Montreal on Sunday afternoon. If it's the Penguins who win tonight, the series begins here on Sunday afternoon at the Igloo, the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Down to the final 34 seconds of this opening period. Francis over the line, penalty clock is the same. Joey Mullen shot, hits Healy and bounces toward Tockett. Back it goes, Murphy to the point for Francis. Into Mario Lemieux, looks to Francis. Gave him the puck. Francis across to Murphy with 15 seconds. Murphy centers, Joey Mullen shot off. Healy off the post as well. Comes around the boards, but not to Lemieux. Kasparaitis plays it to the near side. And Brian Mullen is pinched off, but still able to clear the zone. And that will do it. Period number one comes to a close. A big discrepancy in the shots on goal. 19 for the Pittsburgh Penguins, seven for the Islanders, and Glenn Healy, as he has in 12 previous games, comes up big in the first period. Frustrated, Scotty Bowman. Team can't get the opening goal. Half a dozen of those 19 Pittsburgh shots end on the power play. But after one, it is the Islanders and the Penguins scoreless in Game 7 of the Patrick Division Championship. Our first intermission coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. The team's returning to the ice for the second period. The scores, the New York Islanders nothing, the Pittsburgh Penguins nothing. Earth, this update on the Islanders scoring leader list. Ray Ferraro being chased now by Steve Thomas and Derek King. Four points separating them. Ferraro's 12 goals, leading all goal scorers in the playoffs of 93. Pierre Turgeon is back in the lineup tonight. Then it's Benoit Hogue and Patrick Flatley, who is not in the lineup. An update for Snapple. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the New York Islanders, and it's intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Islanders and Sports Channel is prohibited. 11 seconds into period two, and here's Kasparaitis moving the puck up and out of the zone. It bounced away from the defenseman, Ramsey. So Murphy hustled back, and Loisel catches up to him. Claude well, Loisel pins Murphy on the boards. Delgarno digs it loose. Can't center the puck, however, and it's Sean McEachern starting out. McEachern playing with Tockett and Lemieux. McEachern to Tockett. Centers one that's cleared by Kasparaitis. Michelle Samuelson trapped it outside the line, backs up to his own blue line, then turns it up the boards, and there's Pilon. On to Delgarno, to Fitzgerald, 
Back to Brad Delgarno, plays it away from Tockett, and Shell Samuelson takes over for the Penguins. Shell Samuelson dumps it in from center ice. Pilon reaching for it, takes it back of the net. McEckert into four check. Pilon up off the boards through Shell Samuelson and down the ice. We'll get an icing call against the New York Islanders. The report I got from the Pittsburgh dressing room, courtesy of Dave Molinari of the Pittsburgh uh, Post Gazette, on the status of Vera Yager, who went off early at the end of uh, period one. Split ends. <laughs> Little problem with the hair. He said it's not career threatening, and he, in all likelihood, will. will well, return. it might be if his hair falls out. Oh. <laughs> Molinari, one of the funniest guys around. <laughs> is he suggesting that Yaramir Yager is a little soft? I would think that's what you could read into that. Yes. Yeah. Split ends. In other words, he can get knocked out of the game very easily. Mm. Joey Mullen on the right side. The puck came back. Shell Samuelson on the long shot. They have been going high, but Glenn Healy made sure there is nothing coming back his way off the glass. Yaramir Yager must have found the right conditioner to hand, handle the split ends because he is back on the bench. There's the draw that Pittsburgh just won a moment ago. Shell Samuelson. There's the shot. Glenn Healy playing catch with him. He gets a good look at it. It's Gerald and Tippett on the draw. They get it back to Shell Samuelson again. They jammed the front of the net, but couldn't get the puck to Loney in time. And here's Molokov. Banks it off the boards right to Barrasso. He'll clear the, into the center ice zone again using the boards. And Dennis Vasky goes to King with that pass that's broken up. Joey Mullen plays it back inside the Pittsburgh zone. Into four check is Ferraro stepping in front of all Samuelson. Comes around to Joey Mullen. King kicked it away from him. Gary King puts it in front. A scramble. The puck loose now for Joey Mullen. Off the boards to Dave Tippett. Deloney stepping across is Balikoff, and the Penguins have to chase it. Russell leaves it back in the net for Shell Samuelson. He's played it through Ferraro and around to Troy Loney, who didn't get a stick on it. Tippett did. Now Loney dumps it to the Islander line, where Thomas knocked it down. To Derrick King, up to Ferraro, over the line on right wing. Cuts inside, drops it off for Derrick King, who shoots blocked by Shell Samuelson, and Barrasso clears it. But right to Ferraro. Can't get it to Thomas in the high slot. In instead to Derrick King. To Huey Krupp. Krupp jumping up here, carries it back of the net. Looks for somebody in front. There's a delayed penalty to be called on the Penguins. Krupp to Ferraro. Ray Ferraro to Steve Thomas. Back to the blue line. Curvers with a shot that changed direction. Thomas goes for it in the corner. And now referee Van Helleman calls the play. And the Islanders will get their second power play opportunity of this game. The signal is a holding penalty to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Not sure just who it is. Dave Tippett now seems to be heading over toward that side. Van Helleman talking to him. There it is. The signal for holding. So the Islanders who had started this period putting Pittsburgh back into their own end of the ice and keeping them there for a penalty. Here's Huey Krupp held the puck. Ferraro in front of the net. Krupp trying to get it to him. Good job by Ulf Samuelson as he blocked the pass from Huey Krupp. But that's some of the action of the Islanders in the offensive zone, something they didn't get in the first period. Reminiscent at all, Ed, to the opening period in 1975, didn't Pittsburgh dominate the first period of that game? <laughs> they dominated a whole lot of things, Jiggs, but they didn't dominate the score, but they did. They came out and played it as if it was the first of a sudden death over time. Of course, a lot of people feel that seventh games are overtime, just that you have the leniency if you give a goal up somewhere earlier in the game. It was far before my era with the Islanders, but talking to some of the veterans around the press box here, they said how similar the first period was to that game in 1975 that decided the series in favor of the Islanders. On a goal by 18, here's an outbreak to Lemieux, and nothing doing as Molokov came back along with Curvers. Here, Turgeon can't get it through the skates of Francis. Tom Curvers put it on the boards, and Larry Murphy gets checked by Pierre Turgeon. Up with it is Curvers, got tripped up. The puck loose at the Pittsburgh line. Larry Murphy bats it up ahead. Here's Lemieux, one-on-one -on -one with Molokov. Lemieux cuts inside, and Healy makes the stop. Out comes Thomas, down right wing. Turgeon moving with him. Thomas blasted it around the boards. Hogue goes in after it. The puck goes to Thomas, with the blue line to Krupp. 
Over to Baskey, unloads. Barrasso to save. The rebound was batted wide. Nice play by Thomas, but couldn't get it on target. Good shot by Baskey, too. Low and on the net. Now Benoit Hogue digs it out of the corner. It's centered back to the blue line. Krupp to Baskey. Baskey with it up on edge, and his shot hit Ulf Samuelson. Bounces to Tockett, and he's cleared it out. Well, didn't get it out. Now it is chipped out by the Penguins. And Krupp takes it with half a minute to go in this power play. On to Baskey. Calendars with one shot on goal thus far. 23 seconds with the man advantage. Baskey to Krupp. He's dumped it in. It jumped over Shell Samuelson. Stick King went into forecheck. And it goes over the glass, courtesy of Shell Samuelson. So the clock stopped with 15 seconds remaining in the penalty to tip it. And again, the Pittsburgh Penguins do a pretty good job of killing off the Islanders' power play, although it does have 15 seconds remaining. Islanders, two for four on the power play in game six, so things were starting to get better for them. Power play that has let them down throughout the playoffs. There's the shot by Vasky. Rebound by Thomas, shuffled just wide of the net. Rosso looking up at the penalty clock. 15 seconds. Durjan, who had been out on the power play, talking to Huey Krupp at the Islander bench. Just two weeks ago, last Wednesday night, the incident involving Dale Hunter and Pierre Turgeon that knocked him out of the lineup. Gasparitis controls the puck following the draw into Ferraro, trying to play it through Murphy. Murphy reaches back, and now it goes to Francis. Turn it to center ice. That's Lemieux moving up. The puck hit Kasparaitis on the feet from Pilon. So back the other way to Volick. Out of Ferraro. Taken off the puck and a hip check. Going by Ramsey, and the play is offside at the Pittsburgh line. There's still a nothing-nothing tie at Pittsburgh. Shell Samuelson to Needham off his stick, and Kasparaitis has it at center. Back to Pilon. Straka, Needham. Up for checking for the Penguins. The Islanders have dumped it in. David Volick went in after it. Now Kasparaitis comes in late. Bump Needham, and the puck goes to Vakota. Shot up high over Barrasso's goal. Herjan getting a regular shift now with this unit. Elon slaps the puck in. Herjan, Vakota, and Volick go after it. Volikov and Baski on defense. There's David Volick. Plays it behind the net. Barrasso out to handle it. Around to the left point for Vasky. Puts it back of the net for Pierre Turgeon. Through him, however, Shell Samuelson wraps him up. Jennings takes a hit from Vakoda. And Needham accepts the pass and starts out through center ice. Needham over the line with Troy Loney. Drops it off. Loney chased to the corner by Molikov. Puck comes loose on the end boards. Aglianetti had jumped in on the play. There's Strzok with a shot that changed direction. The Islander goal is off. And referee Van Helleman calling the play. I'm going to talk to Glenn Healy. I think there's going to be a penalty, Jake, by the action of the goal uh, by the referee. Now he's heading over to the off heights officials. Interference, I believe, is the signal on Vladimir Molikov. Glenn Healy is upset. Off to the right of the net. There, holding the player. That's Molikov. Two minutes for interference. So, Time of the penalty. Pittsburgh break out of the hole that the Islanders had them in in their own end of the ice. They get deep in the Islanders end. Molikov draws a penalty, so a scoring opportunity presents itself for the Pittsburgh Penguins. A lot of people here in this building, over 16,000, but they're not all Penguin fans. Uh, these guys were in the building very early. They're from Babylon and uh, Westbury, we're told, with their Islander banner. wonder who they knew to get seats up that high. They change friends. Huey Krupp plays it away from Lemieux, but didn't get it out of the zone. Murphy to Mario to Larry Murphy. Looked to the left, gave it back to Mario Lemieux. Lemieux, with Francis calling for it, gave it to him, then back to Lemieux. Off his stick, Krupp steps in. Francis is there to Lemieux. Back to the blue line. Off Samuelson, shot change direction. Murphy picks it up. Plays it through Lemieux, through Francis as well. Pilon turned it around the boards, but here's Lemieux. But Murphy back into Mario Lemieux. At the top of the circle, he sets up Murphy for a drive. Healy the stop, big rebound. Lemieux's backhander went wide on the deflection. Lemieux gets checked in the corner. Pilon protecting the puck. Trying to freeze it now. Joey Mullen trying to knock it loose. Does. Mario Lemieux. Back to Ulf Samuelson and a diving. Huey Krupp got it outside the Islander blue line. 
Englund's dump it in now and give chase. Pilon goes after it. Murphy comes in. He is bumped solidly by Krupp. Johnny Francis handling the puck, however. Krupp is on him. Huey Krupp tying up both Murphy and Francis. Murphy dug it loose, centered. Healy got a chunk of it. And Joey Mullen ended up in the end boards. Here's a long pass for Hold. Off his gates, offside as well in the Pittsburgh zone with 43 seconds left in Bolikoff's penalty. Pretty good action down in the Islanders end of the ice, breaking up the play. Good chance for Tommy Fitzgerald after he broke up the pass. Benoit Hogue trying to break away. The Islanders couldn't get him the puck soon enough. He was up the ice. Pittsburgh setting up. Islanders doing a pretty good job. They've held the puck and the player along the boards. Lemieux off to the side. Here's the shot coming in. Healy got a look at that. You saw him kick it, but now it's a loose puck. And Lemieux comes in, bats the rebound that deflected off to your left into the corner. Some of the power play of the Pittsburgh Penguins using the point man rather than Lemieux. They're missing Kevin Stevens, and that hurts them on the power play. Larry Murphy has the puck knocked off his stick. Walker up with it, banked it off the boards. Back goes Kasparaitis, pocket moving it on him. Kasparaitis golfs it away from Yager. Mel Samuelson checked by Loisel, and Kasparaitis feeds it out. This is Brian Mullen. Mullen into the Pittsburgh zone, 19 seconds in the penalty kill for the Islanders. Murphy to Tockett, and the Penguins are out of the zone. Yager carries it here, gave it to Tockett. Back to Yager, left side, Lemieux. Healy robs him with the left pad. Tockett unable to pick it up. Floyd Loisel does, and the Islanders have killed off this penalty. Yager to the Islander blue line. Vasky took him into the board solidly. Tockett and Loisel go back to the puck. Loisel around the boards. Here's Shell Samuelson. Into the corner to Lemieux, drags it back to the net. Center, Shell Samuelson. Oh, Samuelson scores! Not only happiness written all over the face of the Pittsburgh Penguins, but a lot of relief. They get the first goal when the power play is over. Lemieux had a great scoring opportunity, but behind the net, at even strength, the pass. There's the shot of beauty. It was low. It was hard. It deflected. It deflected twice. It went off Tockett and then went off the goaltender, Healy, and into the net. Look at the crowd in front of Healy. All he can do is get down there and pray that the puck doesn't get by him. But it deflected off Tockett. It hit him and went into the net. One to nothing lead for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Doesn't change the strategy. The Islanders knew that they were going to have to score possibly more than one goal in this hockey game in order to win it. It took 24 shots to get one by Glenn Healy tonight. Oh, it's 1-0 Pittsburgh, and they're back in there again. Tippett went to center one. Picked off and cleared out by King. Chasing it is Ulf Samuelson. He is credited with the goal. Ulf around the Taglianetti. Up the right side, too far for Joey Mullen. The Islanders either touched it or could have, so icing is waved off, and Ferraro takes it here on the left-wing boards. The outlet is to Volick, working on Shell Samuelson. Up comes King. The pass to King. Jumps in front of him, right into the catching glove of Barrasso. At Pittsburgh, the Penguins have a one to nothing lead. Islanders made a big mistake on the goal, Jake. Malikov's penalty was over, and instead of him going back into his own end to help out, he skated to the Islanders' bench. By the time they got a man on for him into their own end of the ice, precious seconds wasted, Pittsburgh had scored a goal. It's credited to Alf Samuelson with assist to Mario Lemieux and Shell Samuelson at the 7.59 mark. Period number two. Molotov back in the goal for the Islanders. Around to Steve Thomas. Came outside the line. He ties up Alf Samuelson. Unable to move the puck. Finally it comes loose and Claude Loisel puts a pick on Yager as Vasky went for the puck. Dennis Vasky. Down to Molotov. Vladimir Molotov. Vasky, long pass into the middle of the ice. Here's Thomas into the Pittsburgh zone, pulls up. Tried to make the play to Fitzgerald, and Yager was there, doesn't see the puck. Loisel does. Makes it to the corner, but Taglianetti handles it down. Around to the open side. Rick Tockett, the armor Yager, across the Islander blue line. Yager drops it back. Mario Lemieux to Tockett, and he shot it high. Molotov, checked back of the net. 
Asperitis turns it up the boards and out towards center through Murphy. No icing call to be made. Rosso is way out to handle it here. Off the end boards, chasing it to the right wing corner is Delgarno. Fired in front of the net. That didn't hit anybody in time. Asperitis gets to it. Into the corner to hold. Trying to play it through Murphy. Oh, protects the puck. Back to Kasparitis. Over it goes. Delgarno closes in with a shot that went high. Kasparitis off the left point. Tries to get it away from Tockett. Gave it to Hogue, and his shot was blocked by Loney. Larry Murphy gets it out of the zone, and Loney comes down the left side. Dropped it off for Tockett. Check from behind, and the puck ends up at the end boards. The Kekker is knocked down. Stepping up for it is Delgarno. On to Brian Mullen. Mullen slowed up at center ice. Back on the play was Loney. That's Shell Samuelson. McEachern gets checked. Ryan Mullen dumps it in. Chasing it is Jennings. Plays it up the right wing boards for Shell Samuelson. Pervers held it at the point. To the corner for Hogue. And while Hogue for the Islanders to David Follick, who got checked back in the net. Here's Mike Needham for Pittsburgh. He sends Loney to center. Right at the end of the shift, Loney dumps it in. Back forward is Krupp. Nine minutes remaining, period two. Huey Krupp rushing with the puck. Through center ice, on and over the Pittsburgh line, he goes. Ian Volick had tangled up on the boards. David Volick lost it, and the Penguins send Joey Mullen down right wing. Coming across his curvers, Mullen pulled the shot, and it went wide. Daniels goes to the end boards. Back goes Ferraro for the Islanders. Ferraro trying to outleg Francis. Hits the center, backhands it into the Pittsburgh zone. King is after it. Eric King got to it first, and Taglianetti knocks it away from him. Around through Jeff Daniels into the Islander zone. No icing here. Much better pace coming into the hockey game now. The fans are into the game since Pittsburgh got the opening goal. The Islanders have started to match the Penguins stride for stride. Malakoff to Delgarno. Tipped it around Murphy. Ramsey plays it out of the zone. Lemieux got slowed up at center. He's played the puck rink wide. Talking on it now. Up to Mario Lemieux. Lemieux cruising in from the Islander blue line. Cross ice, Tockett shot into the pads of Healy, and there's no further play. Eight minutes, one second remaining, period two. You're watching the Patrick Division Championship game live on Sports Channel. Double shifted here. Last time he was out, he was playing center with Mario Lemieux. Now he's out playing on the right wing. Tippett's at center. And Loney is over on the left side. The Islanders uh, countering here with Delgarno. Loisel and Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald and Tippett on the faceoff. Won by the Penguins. Kasparitis and Loney go to the end boards. Pilon there as well. Now Yager sneaks in for Pittsburgh. Fitzgerald is on him. And the puck is loose behind Glenn Healy. Back forward is Loisel. Around the end boards. Yager pushed to the boards by Kasparitis. Yager still trying to play the puck. Trying to get a little room on Kasparitis, who ties him up now, but it's tipping a wraparound, doesn't go through. And Brad Delgarno clears the zone for the Islanders. Seven and a half minutes to play in the second period. Pilon dumps the puck in. The Islanders get the play on side, and Turgeon goes into forecheck. Turgeon is out with Mullen and Thomas just now. Long pass by the Penguins, misses Yager. Healy has to play it. Ryan Mullen takes it in a little deeper. Gave it to Group. Thomas on the right wing boards. Mullen goes up the left side. The pass to Curvers into the center ice zone and tipped on into the Pittsburgh territory. Murphy is back. Larry Murphy up the middle to Francis. On to Joey Mullen. Shoots it into the Islander territory. Healy swings it around to the open side. That's Turgeon stepping up, gets it out of the zone. Off Joey Mullen's stick. Murphy back. To Daniels who missed it. Here Turgeon gets checked. He was able to get enough of Daniels to slow up his pursuit of the puck. Francis will dump it in. Krupp is there. Now to Curvers. Back to Huey Krupp. The Curvers. Penguins lead. One to nothing as Brian Mullen tips Curvers pass. Rosso had a little trouble handling it. There's Steve Thomas, but he didn't find the handle on it. And now comes Daniels. Jeff Daniels dumps it in from center ice. Healy leaves it back in the net for Vasquez. as the Islanders change up more. Loisel is back out. Vasky waiting behind the net. Molotov from the far corner. Turgeon moves up the left wing boards, then cut through center, and the puck will go right to Barrasso. Long pass, misses everybody in a white uniform, and it eluded Molotov as well. 
Now Delgarno has come out to replace Steve Thomas. Peter Taglianetti waited at center and then shot the puck right back into the Islander zone. Under six minutes remaining in period two at Pittsburgh. The Penguins lead one to nothing. It's Fitzgerald and sent Loisel to center. Ron Loisel puts it in the far corner. Delgarno after it. A check by Olf Samuelson. In comes Fitzgerald. Knocks it loose. Going to the corner is Rick Tockett, and he failed to clear it out. Loisel's shot is grabbed and dropped off by Barrasso. Then he decides to cover it with Delgarno moving in quickly. Penguins 1 0 over the Islanders. Some observations. Here's Dan. Thank you, Jigs. We're going to have Ray Ferraro on at the end of the second period. The Islanders obviously not offense, and they are not getting that pass out of their zone, that pass that will enable them to get an attack going. That is what Pittsburgh is doing very well. It's going to require some defensemen carrying the puck more. Pittsburgh doing a very effective job of forechecking right now, stalling the Islanders. Jigs? All right, Stan, the only goal of the game, Alf Samuelson from Mario Lemieux and Shell Samuelson at 7.59 of the second period. A little surprised that they haven't changed that. I thought it looked as though when Samuelson, Alf, shot it, it hit Tockett in front of the net, deflected off his skates into Healy and off Healy into the net, but maybe it didn't go off Tockett. Well, at this time, it remains all Samuelson's goal. We watch Huey Krupp go back to recover the puck. Wallach and King out with him. Ferraro has dipped the puck into the Pittsburgh zone, and Ramsey plays it high, but not out. On the end boards is Murphy. Tippett there to help him. Murphy to Dave Tippett off his stick. He picks it up at center. Fires it wide of Glenn Healy. Huey Krupp in a collision here with Loney. The puck went to Ferraro. Plays it through Tippett to Wallach. Back through Ferraro at goals, but the Islander goal is off. Clock stopped with four minutes and 50 seconds left in the second period. Welcome back to Pittsburgh. Francis lines up for the Penguins. Tommy Fitzgerald for the Islanders. They're to the right of Glenn Healy's net, and the Penguins get the draw. Samuelson slaps it toward the corner. Came off the boards for Kasparitis. His pass didn't get through Francis. Kasparitis with it again. Up to Tom Fitzgerald, onto the stick of Thomas. Ho goes to the front of the net. Thomas to Hogue, and he is checked on the play. Nice move by Daniels to get to Hogue. Terjean, Thomas, and Hogue, the Islander forward unit. Taglianetti to Alf Samuelson, now to Yager. On to Francis. He has dumped it well wide of Healy, who handles it here, setting it up for Rich Pilon. Into the middle to Terjean. And the back pass didn't get to Thomas. Then Alf Samuelson leaned into Terjean at the blue line, testing the shoulder. In time, it's Kasparitis with a pass out of the reach of Thomas. It curled right to the Pittsburgh goal. The Islanders changing up, getting Vasky and Molikoff out of defense. The view is up for Pittsburgh. Al Arbor likes to have Molikoff out there every time Mario's on the ice. Islanders hockey is being brought to you by Mobile Super Unleaded Plus, the detergent gasoline. Well, as you might expect, a capacity crowd here. On a ticket in town, what with the Pirates being away. They're in Chicago this afternoon. A pretty day. Not as nearly as warm as games one, two, or three in this series. Nowhere near the 90 degrees. Just a tick or two over 70, but a bright, sunny day in Pittsburgh today. As Dan said, Ray Ferraro will join him on... Our second intermission with three minutes and 50 seconds of playing time away from having completed two periods. Loisel ran into Shell Samuelson. The puck pinned on the boards long enough for a faceoff. Islanders aren't panicking, Jigs, and they can't do that. They have time on their side. A patient hockey team. Al Arbor worked with them all year long for these situations, but they need everybody. They need the best effort from everybody on the Islander bench. They've got to start to create some scoring opportunities. One of the areas that they've hurt, they're hurt in a lot is the face-off area. Travis Green, who had won so many important face-offs in the playoffs so far, not in the lineup. Now Tom Fitzgerald got it across the line. Loisel shot went wide. And Delgarno turns it toward the corner. Big hit here, Fitzgerald and Ramsey. Loisel goes for the puck, couldn't center it to a teammate. Ramsey played it behind Murphy and got it out of the zone. Needham is playing the left side with Lemieux and Tockett just now as Scotty Bowman gives us a look at another forward combination as he tries to replace the injured Kevin Stevens. 
Ramsey dumping the puck out of play is in his effort to get it into the Islander end of the ice. You know, there's only one thing better than an Islander's win, and that's celebrating with a nice cold Budweiser, the king of beers. Another close-up look at Mario Lemieux. Uh, the way Mario Lemieux plays the hockey game, it's, I suppose, the fact that Kevin Stevens and his abilities aren't there doesn't make any difference the way Lemieux conducts himself. Doesn't matter, he's on one side of the ice, the other, he's down deep, he's up high. Uh, when you play with a player of his ability, you have to adjust to the way he plays. So all these players that come out that he hasn't seen on his line for a long time have to make the adjustment. Lemieux back on the bench as they go with Joey Mullen, Troy Loney, and Dave Tippett just now. That's Ray Ferraro. And back to the point, Volick played it through King, however. Barrasso started out of the net and allowed Samuelson to play the puck. He did, right to Ferraro. Into the corner, Derek King after it. It came back to Ferraro. On to King. King can't handle it. Taglianetti gave it right back to him. Derek King trying to set up Ferraro as he went back in the net. But Tippett steps in. The Penguins try to come up the boards. That's taken away by Volick. Out to Ferraro for a shot that hit off Samuelson and goes out of play. Off Samuelson playing as if he was a goaltender. He did that in the first period. He's done it here against Ray Ferraro in the second. Good work by David Volick to get the puck to Ferraro. The Islanders winning the little battles down deep. There's the pass. Volick, there's the shot by Ferraro. Off Samuelson, a skate save in front of Tom Barrasso. There he is, getting out his left leg. See the puck? Pretty when you get that super slow motion. Get a good look at some of the action. The Islanders trying to create scoring opportunities. Ray Ferraro that time. 2.21 remaining in period two. Hogue with Mullen on the left. Thomas on the right. The puck kicked toward the corner. Joey Mullen ran into Larry Murphy's check, and there's... Mario Lemieux clearing the zone. Francis can't get to it at the Islander blue line. So Casper Wright is feeds it rink wide. Hogan's over the line with Thomas. The pass to Thomas. His shot was blocked by Ramsey. Thomas turned it toward the corner. Francis there. And he moves it up ahead to Mario Lemieux. Went to the left side. That's Jeff Daniels. Pilon ties him up. Kick saved by Healy right to Hogue. Up to Casper Wright with Thomas to the right. Mullen moves up for the Islanders. And the play broken up by Shell Samuelson. Molokov slaps it back in. Penguins changing on the fly. Islanders with too many men on the ice. They've got the bench of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And here's Holt with a shot. Thomas the rebound. He scores! Stevie Thomas ties it up. Beautiful goal by the Islanders. They had too many men on the ice for a moment, but nobody caught them. The bench of the Pittsburgh Penguins up yelling and screaming. Still no action. But the Islanders grab the puck. They steal it in the offensive zone. Steve Thomas. He caught Tom Barrasso on the wrong side. Look at the fencing going on in front. There's the loose puck grabbed by Hogue. There's the shot wide, but Thomas grabbed it off the backboard, flipped it into the top of the net. It's a 1-1 tie. There was the clearing play. Unsuccessful. There's the shot. Missed. There's the goal. It was Alf Samuelson that tried to clear the puck out of his own end of the ice. And Benoit Hall grabbed it, and that was the breakdown leading to the goal by Thomas. 26th career playoff goal for Steve Thomas, sixth of the playoffs of 93, coming at 18-28. The game is tied at one, and Ray Ferraro back in his own zone for the Islanders. Moves it on to Derek King, drops back in a little deeper, was picked up by Tippett. Volokov, after accepting the pass, gives it to Volokh. Out across the line, up ahead to Volokov, into the Pittsburgh zone. He shoots just wide to Barrasso. King lets it go and missed. David Volokh steps out of the corner, centers through Ferraro. Volokov got a poke at it and missed. Backing him up is Dennis Vasky, and he shoots it on into the Pittsburgh end. Off the boards to Murphy. Ferraro flushes him from back of the net. Murphy goes to the left side, the pass off Tonkin. Back into the Pittsburgh zone and offside. The other forwards, Ferraro and King got out of there, but Volick did not, then he handled the puck. I want to remind fans of the Islanders that the cruise to Bermuda leaves on Sunday, August 1st, with Benoit Hogue, Derek King, and Glenn Healy from this year's team. Dennis Potvin, Jerry Hart, Ed Westfall from Islander teams past. The number to call is 1-800-828-4813. 1-800-828-4813.
828-4813 for Hartford Holiday's travel of uh, Great Neck, Long Island. Limited number of uh, cabins still available with discounts for Islander fans. A week in the sun. Leave on uh, Sunday, August 1st, four days in Bermuda. And no, all Samuelson will not be on the cruise. <laughs> not even invited. <laughs> We'd like to have you with us. We'll give the folks a call on Monday, 1-800-828-4813. Just handed a note, excuse me, Jake, just handed a note that Kevin Stevens, along with the concussion and the laceration, has a broken nose. Oh, man. Last 30 seconds of this period tick off. Game is scoreless after one. Tied 1-1 one, one right now as the Penguins get to the Islander line. Pilon moves it up to right. Delgarno is checked by Alf Samuelson, and Francis goes over to help out. Delgarno kicked the puck over the line. Claude Loisel gets to it. Shell Samuelson gets to him, and back goes Ron Francis. Final nine seconds of period two. So it's anybody's game, anybody's series going to the third period. Period two draws to a close. A good period for the Islanders. They saw themselves fall behind, but they didn't quit. They stayed in. They battled. They fought. Glenn Healy made the stops necessary, and they've got the game tied up. A brand new game. It's a one-period game when they return for the third period. I think if you were to have asked the coaching staff this morning or management, they would have said, this is exactly where we want to be, going to the third period. If we can't be leading, let's at least be tied. And that's where they are. The Islanders and the Penguins, 1-1 after two periods. We'll be back. Second intermission is coming up. Canon Teamwork Moment is brought to you by the team of Canon Technology and MCS Service. One is a great reason to buy the other. Let's take a look at a teamwork moment. I talked a couple of times about Al Samuelson and how he stepped up to make saves in front of Tom Barrasso. David Bollock stole the puck. That's his pass. Watch Samuelson here as the goaltender twice in this game. That time off Ray Ferraro. A teamwork moment. MCS and Cannon. A save by Al Samuelson. One is a great reason to buy the other. Well, during the intermission, while you were dealing with the highlights, I was up and down press row. Nobody has a Valium. A what? Valium? Nobody <laughs> had any. <laughs> wow. 1-1. One, one. Capacity crowd. Game 7. Patrick Division Championship. One of these two teams playing its final third period of 1992-93 in the 93 playoffs. There may be overtime. Oh, yes. There may be who knows what to happen here, and it's all ready to unfold on Sports Channel as the Islanders are forced back into their own zone. The puck around the boards, taken by Murphy. Golfed it on the end boards. There's Kasparaitis, couldn't get it through Lemieux. Now it comes to the right wing boards, and Brad Delgarno plays it into center ice. Tommy Fitzgerald knocks it into the Pittsburgh zone, and Barrasso up off the boards. Delgarno knocked down, but still able to keep the puck in the Pittsburgh territory, and it's Yager rounding the net. Up the middle he comes, Yarmer Yager into the Islander zone, to the backhand, gets checked, the hip thrown by Kasparaitis, the puck taken by Fitzgerald, and he has cleared it out. Interesting line to start the period with Jake, Yarmer Yager on the right side, talking on the left, and Lemieux in the middle. Scotty Bowman trying to get a quick start. We're 44 seconds into the third period. The season began for both teams on October 6th. The Islanders losing in New Jersey by a score of four to three. And on that opening night when they raised their Stanley Cup banner number two to the rafters here, the Penguins and the Philadelphia Flyers played a 3-3 tie. But a lot of hockey sense. Oh, yes, there was training camp prior to that, of course. The Islanders playing their 13th playoff game tonight. The Penguins their 12th. 26 shots on Glenn Healy, 11 on Tom Barrasso at the other end of the ice. Hogue is out with Thomas and Loisel against Francis, Daniels, and Mullen for Pittsburgh. Linesman Swede docks, ready to put the puck in play. Does. Hogue stepped up. The Penguins move it back. Oh, Samuelson plays it around the boards. Healy to the left side for Loisel. Bumped by Francis. Shell Samuelson plays it in deeper. Facing it is Daniels. Gave it away to Hogue to Thomas. Steve Thomas to Claude Loisel, and he'll dump it in. The Islanders give chase. Barrasso out to play it. Left it behind the net. Ulf Samuelson clears it through center. It's loose in the Islander territory. 
Mullen at the blue line, up to Thomas, who couldn't get through three Penguins, so back goes Hogue. And while Hogue, on to Brian Mullen, a two-line pass offside. On tomorrow, baseball on Sports Channel, but it's Rusty Stop Day in Montreal. The Mets taking on the Expos tomorrow afternoon, and before the game, you can see the Expos retire Rusty's number 10, Le Grand Orange. Tomorrow's day, Mets and Expos. Game is at 1.30. Coverage of the Rusty Ceremony begins at 12.30, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. What a thrill for the big guy tomorrow oh. in Montreal. And we'd like to be there, and it's <laughs> certainly on the line, isn't it? Well, there's a pretty good opportunity. If you talk to the Islanders, as you mentioned uh, at the end of the second period, Jiggs, if you talk to the players and the coaching staff, management, the Islanders were in this position going to the third period. They'd be very happy. Ferraro and Tippett on the draw. And talked with Bill Smith, Don Maloney, Darcy Regeer between periods. That's the feeling, but here's a shot here that doesn't get through to Healy. Needham battling for it. Healy dives out to cover the puck. Played a minute and 33 seconds at the beginning of this third period. Islanders can't afford those kinds of mistakes. They're passing the puck around. They're allowing the defenseman, in this case Murphy, coming down from his right point position, putting pressure on the Islanders. Wingers trying to pick up a puck shot around the boards. Going to have to start using up the middle, a pass to the centerman up the middle if Pittsburgh is successful at creeping down the boards. We haven't seen a whole lot of Steve Junker in tonight's game. Played more in uh, game five, game six rather than he has tonight, replacing Patrick Flatley in the lineup. With Travis Green out. Here Terjean back in the lineup tonight. Seeing limited duty, will we see more of him? Here's an opportunity and Healy takes it away from Mario and covers the puck. Mario ends up between Ferraro and Volick. Glenn Healy had safely tucked the puck away long enough for a whistle. Al Arbor going to change lines here now. He's going to try and get Tommy Fitzgerald out. He's been trying to get him out against Mario Lemieux with Travis Green at home. Eye injury. But now Scotty Bowman, he switches up with Francis and Mullen coming out. Another look at Glenn Healy. Talking in the goal crease. That was a shot by Lemieux. Larry Murphy dumps it in front of the Islander net. Delgarno can't get it away from Lemieux. It goes back to the point. Ramsey fires one. Healy the stick save and the puck stays in play. Murphy puts it to the side of the net. Healy in a little trouble, but his teammates bail him out, and Loisel clears the zone. Now the Penguins set up at center. Ramsey got the play back on side before dumping it in. Asperitis failed to get it through Francis, but then he takes him down with a hip check. Joey Mullen steps back to the net. First one came off the mesh. He centers one here that goes off Pilon skate. Right to Delgarno to Loisel. Don Loisel misfired at the line, then gets across the line and shoots just wide of Tommy Barrasso. Up with it here as Mike Ramsey rushes down the left wing board. Pass broken up by Vasky, and he cleared it to the Pittsburgh territory. Shell Samuelson banked it to the line. Vasky to King. Volick with him as he crosses the Pittsburgh line. Gave it to Volick for a shot. Barrasso the stop. Loose puck in front. Ferraro couldn't get there in time, but now he's got it in the corner. Centered only to have it broken up. And Alf Samuelson moves it to Rick Tockett. Tockett checked momentarily. And across it goes to Yager, to Straka. Straka left it. Yager moving in. Ferraro is on him. Yager turns, centers it back toward Alf Samuelson from the blue line. Long shot, Healy the save, and out of there steps Ferraro. On to King, back to Ferraro. Two men back for Pittsburgh. Ferraro can't dance between them. The Penguins move it to the right side to Yager, but Vasky's there. On to King. Ferraro gets the play back on side. King had to dump it in. Three minutes and 20 seconds gone at the start of this third period. A 1-1 tie at Pittsburgh as Ferraro Tries to tie up the puck long enough for a face-off, but it eventually came loose. Thomas gets checked by Tippett. Shell Samuelson sends it up the left side. Needham coming back. Brian Mullen knocked it away from him. Group goes back in the net. The exchange made with Healy. Huey Group plays the puck on to Brian Mullen over the Pittsburgh line. Got checked. Now Huey Group dumps it in around the glass. And Mike Needham steps out of the far corner. Lifts it high in the air. Rivers with it in the center ice zone. Back to Krupp. 
Here we group. Played it away from Tippett. On to Kerbers. Up the left side. Ryan Mullen shoots it into the zone. It bounced right out in front of the net, and Ramsey is able to clear it. The Islanders and the player change, and again, the Penguins screaming about them having too many men on the ice. Not that time, Jiggs. It was a good change by the Islanders. But Mario was up, bellering at the bench, and Mario now out on the ice gets checked by Pilon. This is Loney back to the view, out of the corner center, shot wide by Needham. Loney gets taken off the puck. Kasparaitis gives it to Thomas. Four Islanders move up, two Penguins back. Kasparaitis carrying it, he should cross the line. Darius Kasparaitis held it, steps away from a check to the backhand, slipped it just wide. Steve Thomas can't get to it. Benoit Hogue does. Hogue put it in a pile of players on the boards, and the Penguins end up dumping it down into the Islanders' zone. Penguins one, Islanders one. Rolf Samuelson for Pittsburgh. Steve Thomas for the Islanders as we watch Molikoff set the play and then pass the puck toward Delgarno and hit Francis. Goes to Dennis Vasky. Vasky shoots one from center ice. Off the boards toward Delgarno. Puts it on the end boards, then ties up Walt Samuelson. In comes Fitzgerald. The puck is on the stick of Francis, and he lugs it down the left side. Ronnie Francis drops it off. Mario Lemieux centers. Taken down on the play is Joey Mullen. No penalty as Molikoff wrapped him up totally. Loisel back the other direction. Gave the puck to Fitzgerald. Cuts into the middle. Can't play it through Tippett. Now he comes back to center and dumps it in. Well, Samuelson will get it out. Long pass too far for Yager. They're into the Islanders zone now, however, to tip it. A shot grabbed and held by Healy. It is still a 1-1 tie. Penguins putting up an effort, trying to get the go-ahead goal. There's the shot. Beautiful stop by Glenn Healy, reaching out. Tip it with a hard shot. Needham had a great scoring opportunity on a pass from Lemieux that he shot wide. Right from the face-off, Tippett went to the net. As part of our intermission, we showed you the last game between these two teams in playoff hockey and the eventual winning goal. In that series in 1972, at the end of the second period in game five, the shots on goal were the Islanders 27, the Penguins 11, Michelle Dion in the nets for Pittsburgh. Tonight at the end of two periods, the Penguins had outshot the Islanders 26 to 11. Yeah. All the ironies, huh? Yeah, that was 1982. 82, yeah. Not the 75 series, the five game job in 82. It's Gerald, bumped by Tockett. Yager has the puck for the Penguins. Can't get it to Tockett as Krupp ties Yager in a knot. Mario Jr. does get it on to Tockett. Fitzgerald's on him. Now the Mew from back of the net. Got it to the side of the goal and the out comes Volek with a pass here to Ray Ferraro. Two on two at the Pittsburgh line. Ferraro drops it off to Volek. Things open up. He scores! David Volek at the 6-10 mark of the third period. It was a two on two break. The Islanders busting out of the end. Lemieux was tied up. Tockett was tied up. Yermer Yager was tied up. All down behind Glenn Healy. And it was a drop pass by Ray Ferraro to David Volick. What a shot by David Volick. He's improved with the ice time that Al Ivers been giving him. There's the drop. Here's David Volick. He looks up, then decides to take the shot and beat Tom Barrasso. On a short side, the Islanders, for the first time, take the lead in the hockey game, the drop pass Ferraro to David Volick. Only the second playoff goal ever for David Volick. Albeit playing in his 10th Stanley Cup game. Ferraro and Fitzgerald. The assists, the goal at 6-10, 2-1 Islanders, icing the call against the Penguins. Still 13 minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the third period at Pittsburgh. Jake's one of the things that the Islanders have done well in this hockey game, particularly here in the third period, each time that the Pittsburgh Penguins were getting shots away at Glen Healy, great coverage by the Islanders around the front of the net. They haven't left the loose pucks that we're used to seeing around the front of the net. Washington took advantage of it. Pittsburgh has taken advantage of it at times in this series, but the Islanders very tight here, not allowing Pittsburgh. They had all three of the forwards tied up behind the net. Now from the faceoff in the Pittsburgh zone, the Penguins trying to move out, and finally they get it from the zone to McEachern. Joey Mullen who dropped it back. McEachern shot went high. Ray Ferraro chases it up the left wing board, jabbed it away from Francis, and the Islanders put it down into the Pittsburgh zone. That's Volick chasing it along with Alf Samuelson. 
Samuelson turns on Volick. Gave it to Shell Samuelson and then around to Joey Mullen. Passes right back to Wolf Samuelson who steps over center and dumps it high. Mullen going in after it for the Penguins. Vasky there to play it to Ferraro. And around to Derek King. Ferraro, King, and Volick come to center ice. Right at the end of the shift, Thomas has come out to join King. And the other forward here is Mullen. Joey Mullen is leaving the ice now as Brian has come out for the Islanders. Brian Mullen at center ice, plays it deep into the Pittsburgh zone. Ramsey puts it back in the net. Mullen in for checking, ties up Tockett, ties up the puck as well. Murphy finally gets it loose. Stolen away from Tockett. Ryan Mullen played it off the blocking glove of Barrasso, but the Penguins jump up on it here. Tockett to the left side for Lemieux. Mario cuts inside, held it, fed it back to Tippett, and nice play by Thomas to check him. Tockett from back of the goal, tied up by Kasparaitis. Down goes Tockett, in comes Thomas. Steve Thomas using the boards. It'll go the length of the ice. We'll get a nicing call against the New York Islanders. 12 minutes and 10 seconds left in the third period. Mario Lemieux, you got to tie up his wingers. Beautiful back checking here by the Islanders. Look at Thomas on Tippett. Thomas rides him out of the play. Action in the Islanders' end of the ice. Penalties. Pilon and Tockett get unsportsmanlike penalties. So it's four on four hockey. Malakoff is out on the ice for the Islanders with Dennis Vasky. The forwards are Fitzgerald and Loisel. That's Claude Loisel dumping it in from center. Bounced it toward Barrasso. Onto the stick of Ramsey. And the Murphy up to Yarmer Yager. Lemieux with him. Yager across the line. Gave it to Lemieux. Off right wing. A big drive went wide. Healy scoops it up as he came off the end boards. So we'll get a face off in the Islander zone. New York Islanders hockey being brought to you by Mobile. Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Isn't your car worth the extra protection? Mario Lemieux on the right side takes the pass from Yager. He leans into this one. It deflected off the Islander. Off the backboard, that was Hogue that got out in front of Lemieux's hard drive. Now one minute, 34 seconds left in the penalties to Tockett and Pilon. 11 minutes and 44 seconds left in the third period. It's Gerald and Hogue discussing positioning here. Hogue is going to take the draw with Francis. Lemieux is to his left. Dennis Vasky is going to come over and Stand on the edge of the circle, closest to Mario Lemieux. Now the Penguins change their alignment. Hogue talks to Vasky. He'll go to Mario. False start. Francis is going to try and tie up Hogue's stick and kick the puck back to Ulf Samuelson. Lemieux moved well away from the faceoff circle, and the Islanders do win the draw. Molikoff up off the boards toward Vasky, and he has cleared it out. Going back to Shell Samuelson. The Islanders changing up. Thomas has come out to join Hogue. Shell Samuelson shot it off Hogue right to Kasparaitis. To the line. He's gotten it in to cross the line, but now Francis starts back. His pass went off Kasparaitis. On to Lemieux. Dumps it to the open corner of the ice. Ends up behind the net. Kasparaitis gave it away to Shell Samuelson. Centers. Mario has checked. Steve Thomas doing the job, and he's got Hogue up ahead. One man back. Thomas to Hogan. He is checked by Shell Samuelson. Here's Mario Lemieux spotting Francis. Caught the Islanders on a change. Francis with a rip. Glove saved by Glenn Healy, and he dropped it off. Malakoff quickly to Hogue. Thomas moves over center. Two Penguins get back. Hogue's long shot. He scores! A rip by Hogue off the blocking glove of Barrasso. It's 3-1 Islanders. These pesky Islanders, they keep picking away. That time, a hard, long drive. Tom Barrasso, we said that he has been having problems from about game four on. And here's the shot, deflected off the stick of Murphy, hit him in the arm, bounced behind him, and into the net. The Islanders have a two-goal lead with 10 minutes and 51 seconds. Remaining in the third period, the shot by Benoit Hogue. It fooled Tom Barrasso. And the Islanders have some breathing room. Hold from Malakoff and Healy is the official scoring on the goal. So goaltender Glenn Healy in on the play at 9.09 of this third period. 
A two-goal lead for the Islanders, and it is very, very quiet at the Civic Arena. Look at Al Arbor. Let's not get carried away here, guys. we got a lot of hockey yet to play. They're a dangerous team. Got to keep checking, keep skating, keep the work ethic up there. Pierre Turgeon, as he sits on the bench only twice, three times, I check myself, correct myself. Has he been out on the ice? 30 seconds remaining in the penalties to Tockett and Pilon, so that four-on-four -four goal by Hogue is second in this series. He had a shorthanded goal, remember, that won game one in this building. Barrasso out to play the puck. In 18 seconds, the teams will be at full strength again. Yager taking the pass from Joey Mullen, steps into the Islander zone, up the slot, checked by Coop, and Healy will cover the puck and get a face on. Islander fans and hockey fans everywhere. Let's introduce once more Pro Bear, the lovable bear that stands over two feet tall, comes complete with an authentic NHL uniform of any team that you choose. Comes with a stick, gloves, skates, helmet, and hockey sense. That's something that you don't get in every bear. Pro Bear available in all NHL colors. Yours for just $79.95, plus $5 for shipping and handling. Order today by sending a check or money order to the address on your screen. You don't have to insist on hockey sense. It comes automatically. <laughs> I suppose I should get one of those for little Dennis Harrington, who's just recovering from the flu. Flu? No. Actually, it turned out to be pneumonia. We thought he had the flu. He's got pneumonia, and he's on the way back. So maybe that'll make him feel a lot better. A perfect gift for any youngster, no matter how young or old. Islanders three, Penguins one. Yager battling on the end boards, got checked, and the puck goes to Fitzgerald. Teams at full strength again. The Islanders have cleared it out. We're halfway through the third period at Pittsburgh. Here's Larry Murphy off the right point. Big shot, big rebound as well, and Tockett is denied by Healy. Out in front is Straka to Yager, poked away by Loisel, and Ray Ferraro bangs it out of the zone. What a stop by Glenn Healy through a screen, making a save off Rick Tockett. Now the Penguins, Yarmer Yager has given the puck to Murphy to talk it. He's into the Islander zone offside. Play called with 9.39 left. Period number three. And I think it's only fair that we point out again that if the Islanders win tonight, the series with the Montreal Canadiens opens in Montreal on Sunday afternoon. That game would be on ABC TV. We would have coverage for you of game two on Tuesday night. We would be back to the Coliseum for games on Thursday and Saturday of next week. If the Penguins come back to win, the series between Pittsburgh and Montreal would open here in Pittsburgh Sunday afternoon on ABC, Channel 7 in New York. Game two would be here on Tuesday, then to Montreal for Thursday and Saturday of next week. Lots of time remaining with the Penguins down by a pair. Delgarno clears the puck. Tied up at the blue line, but outside the line now and shot back in by Ulf Samuelson. It's Gerald looking at Lemieux. A shot here by Shell Samuelson went way wide. Delgarno gets wrapped up by Alf Samuelson, gets taken down by Alf. It's Gerald trying to play it through Lemieux. It went to the corner, and Krupp gets it away from Samuelson, covering the left point. Shell Samuelson back on it now. Shell Samuelson checked by Mullen. Here's Thomas up the middle. Into the Pittsburgh zone, he fed it to Hogue, shoots off the skates of Ramsey, a turnaround by Mullen is blocked. Brian Mullen lets it go, rippled the outside of the net. Benoit Hogue comes off the end board, sets it up, Brian Mullen's shot doesn't get through. The rebound did, and it's cleared away by the Penguin defense. Joey Mullen steps over center ice. The Islanders all but turned out the lights here. McEachern bounces one in. Brian Mullen steps in front of... Ronnie Francis and Benoit Ho gets it to the line. Shot back in by Murphy. Cleared out by the Islanders. Now it's center ice. Ramsey dumps it in. Healy will leave it for Darius Kasparitis. Around to Rich Pilon. Pilon to David Volick. Slaps it off the boards. Volick got the goal to give the Islanders the lead. Hogue extended the lead to two. The Penguins don't get through center ice. Dennis Vasky has dumped it in. Ulf Samuelson clears it out, picking it up as McEachern, steps through center ice, is bet by Volick, and the puck goes to Vasky, and an offside is called as well. You're watching the Islanders and the Penguins in the deciding game for the Patrick Division title. Five seconds left in the third period, the Islanders leading at Pittsburgh three to one. You begin to project ahead. So many have said that if the Islanders were to 
eliminate the Penguins, upset them, if you will. It throws the Stanley Cup playoffs into a tizzy. It's anybody Stanley Cup from there on. Final four already. We know that the Los Angeles Kings, the Montreal Canadiens are in. Will the Islanders be the next to survive? Looks that way. Ferraro's shot doesn't get through. David Follick centers and saved by Barrasso. Eric King unable to regain control, and up ice comes Jogger. He's into the zone, went to the right side. Quick shot here by Loney, misses the net. David Volick can't get it out of the zone. Ramsey goes to the corner center, came right back to Volick. He turns smartly on Loney and clears it out. Struck at center ice to Murphy. Hard around the board. Healy will let it go through. Jabbing at it is Pilon. Delgarno ties up Straka. The puck stays deep in the Islander zone. Murphy jumps up. Put it behind the net, and there's Darius Kasparitis off the boards, and he's cleared it all the way down the ice. An icing call against the Penguins. Six minutes and 43 seconds left in regulation. Let's get a, an insight or two from our colleague, Stan Fischler. Thank you, Jiggs. Well, the Islanders, if they're doing anything wrong now, it might be icing the puck, and they've got to be very careful about the too many men on the ice situation because they got away with two of those episodes earlier in this period. But right now, they're in a very excellent position. As long as they, everybody takes his man out, they win the faceoff. They got to do that. They can't count Pittsburgh out yet. Jiggs? No, you can't by any means. This Penguin team has shown resiliency, resiliency in the past. The Islanders, you talk about a resilient hockey team without Pierre Turgeon for the first six games of the series, without Patrick Flatley now, without Travis Green. Yes, granted, Pittsburgh has lost the services of Kevin Stevens tonight. Ariel's back acted up uh, at the beginning of the series, but he has played regularly and well. He could be sitting in on one of the chapters of all-time great upsets in the history of this National Hockey League and Stanley Cup playoffs. The centennial year for the Stanley Cup. And as one of the writers said in print here in Pittsburgh today, the President's Trophy wouldn't have much meaning for this crowd and the team if they don't three-peat. Murphy has shot the puck in off the end boards. It rolls up the back of the net. Vasky gets a stick on it. On to Delgarno. Played it away from Ulf Samuelson. Ariel Lemieux came across. Put it back in the net. Here's Joey Mullen. Group chases him wide. Now Francis centers. It's loose. And they came off Healy's stick. Joey Mullen with a freebie. And Healy makes the stop. Boy, we're saying that a lot, aren't we? Healy makes the stop in a tough situation. The Islanders are being outshot almost 2-1 to one in this hockey game. But they're still ahead by two. There's Mullen stepping up. There's the shot. Point blank range. Healy with the save. Francis trying to dislodge it. Look at the coverage by the Islanders in front of the net. Healy didn't contain it. Didn't keep it back behind. And there's the loose puck. Mullen hit him right in the crest. Right in the center of the island. Uniondale. 1982 begins to creep back into our minds. The score was 3-1 Pittsburgh with six minutes to play, just under six minutes to play in the third period, and the Islanders came back and won that game in overtime. They were two-time defending Stanley Cup champs. Here we are this Friday night, the 14th of May, 11 years later, under six minutes to play in the third period. The Islanders are leading the Penguins, trying to derail their chance for a Stanley Cup. Tippett knocked the puck away from Kasparitis. Can't get to it. Now he does. Healy steers it to the corner for Hoag. The Kekron on him. Murphy jumps in from the blue line. Benoit Hoag plays it up the boards. And up there it goes. Up with it is Steve Thomas. Ulf Samuelson back. And Thomas's shot went wide. Tippett doesn't get to it. Thomas in front of the road through him right to Barrasso. The Penguins have to open it up. Ulf Samuelson. Long pass. McEachran. Chips it into the Islander zone. Vasky picks him up. They go to the boards together. Molokov there as well. Here's McEachran. Struck out in front. McEachran, a wraparound. They bang it right on. Healy makes a stop off. Talking again. What a toe save by Glenn Healy. Fast feet. Wow. The Islanders have just iced the puck with five minutes and two seconds left. You're right, Jiggs. With five minutes remaining now, the Pittsburgh Penguins trailing by two are going to have to open it up. And when they do, they'll create chances. They created some here. Look at the toe save. Look where Murphy, number 55, the defenseman, all the way in from his right point position. There's the wraparound attempt. There's the rebound by Murphy. Good stop by Glenn Healy. 
Some of these fans are getting up to leave. It's not as if they're leaving in disgust. I think it's just the emotion that they can't sit in the seat anymore. They are moving out toward the lobby. Then you see them come back in. Boy, if you saw the line in the paper today, two to two and a half pucks. The Pittsburgh Penguins were favored over the Islanders in this hockey game. Aren't you glad you didn't? Bet the favorite and bet the ranch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Islanders again have iced the puck. Under five minutes to go in the third period. It's the Islanders three, the Penguins one. That's Craig Patrick, the general manager. To his right, your left, Jill Malosh, goaltending co goal coach for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Look at Rick Kehoe talking to the players. Scotty Bowman working on the gum. The faceoff is in the Islanders' zone. Fitzgerald out battled Straka on the draw. Murphy puts it in the corner. Yager can't come out of there. Neither can Straka, who went to the deck. Tommy Fitzgerald around the boards to Brad Delgarno. Protected the puck, but didn't get it out. Ariel Lemieux is taken off the puck by Yui Krupp. Jasper Wright is there as well. Battle here on the end board. Straka kicking at it. Yager can't play it. Now it's called by referee Andy Van Helm, and I think he's got a couple of matching penalties here. He does, and one of them's Mario Lemieux, and the other one's Huey Krupp, so I guess if you're going to go to the penalty box, Huey, you're taking quite a guy, same size, to the penalty box with you, something that the Pittsburgh Penguins didn't want to see happen. Mario Lemieux, did he crack a little? Some sticks, there's a push. Look at the jab back with the stick by Lemieux. Again by Lemieux, bang, Krupp gives him a stick. Lemieux gives it back to him. So Andy Van Helleman is compelled to give them both penalties. The Islanders come out ahead on the exchange. Two minutes each for slashing at 15.35 of this third period. You know I'm going to be in trouble. Huey Krupp's going to give me heck for that one. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'm not even going to think about the it was race that was supposed to take place between you two. We seem to get away from that when... Uh, oh, the great foot race. Yeah. <laughs> Sled race or whatever. <laughs> 4.25 left in the third period. And you think now the two Stanley Cups that the Penguins have won in 91 and 92. And you think also of the Edmonton Oilers who had won the Stanley Cup twice in a row and then were derailed the following year by the Calgary Flames. Here, Yager is offside. So they didn't get an opportunity to do what the Islanders have done or what Montreal had done even better in strings of Stanley Cup wins. Very difficult to do, and I would think the circumstances in the league today probably see less of it. The matchup certainly didn't favor the New York Islanders. Finished in third place, just squeaked into third on the final game of the regular season, beating the New Jersey Devils. Finished third, eliminated the Washington Capitals. And now they're four minutes and 15 seconds away from eliminating the first place team overall in the defending cup champions. Aren't you glad you're with us? But here's Yager moving in on Healy. Can't complete it. Molikov got just enough of Yager who has fallen over Healy now. And the puck is outside the Islanders' zone. Good coverage by the Islanders deep in their own end of the ice. Vladimir Molikov and Francis battled for it. Hogue can't get it to Thomas. Molikov couldn't get it out of the zone. This is Murphy. In front is Joey Mullen. The shot. They score! Francis! The Pittsburgh Penguins sent everybody down the ice, something they had to do. They've got to take a lot of chances. They took one and it paid off. Time out. Is that what Al Iver's thinking of doing? Juan Francis. Larry Murphy spending more time around the net than is in the Islanders' defenseman. It pays off as Francis is able to wrap in a puck directly in front. There's the pass. There's the shot by Francis. And the Pittsburgh fans that are still here have something to cheer about. There's some hope left for them. There's the puck off the backboard. It got between the knees of Glenn Healy. And it's now a one goal hockey game, three to two. Three minutes and 47 seconds remaining. Uh, Kekrin, after winning the draw, has checked at the Islander line. Volley plays it towards center. And there's Tockett to Murphy. Looks for Tockett going up the middle. The pass choked off by David Volley. He's over the blue line. Checked by Murphy and Barrasso with a chance to play it. 
Three and a half minutes left in the third period. Murphy got the only assist on the goal by Francis. Here's McEachern into the Islander zone. Goes to the right side. Held it, then fired. Healy the save. Talkin drove right to the net. And Healy stepped away from him. We have three minutes and 18 seconds in the third period. Oh, the scenario, the similarities to 1982. Except that in that case, Al Arbor was able to put Roland Melanson in the net briefly. Gave his team a chance to settle down, rest some people. I still think the penalty to Mario Lemieux has a lot of significance. The fans now, emotion, they're spilling it out to their hockey team, trying to get them going, trying to get them another goal here. It's late in the third period. Islanders have had a total of 17 shots in this hockey game. 39 by the Pittsburgh Penguins. 413 to 6 in this period, if you will, in favor obviously of the Penguins. Francis on the draw along with Benoit Hogue of the Islanders. Linesman Swede Knox puts the puck in play. It goes to the boards. Jogger checked there by Vasky. Molokov goes to the boards with Francis. The puck still in play. Molokov couldn't get it out. He'll get a second chance. Gets tied up in the boards. Hand passes it ahead to Hogue. That's in the defensive zone and is just fine, thank you. Now under three minutes remaining, as you see. And Joey Mullen ends up with the puck. Gave it to Yager. Yager through center to the Islander line. Pilon plays it right back into the Pittsburgh zone. Chasing it is Francis. Picks it up with 19 seconds left in the double penalties to Krupp and Lemieux. Murphy to Joey Mullen. Checked by Kasparitis. Darius clears the zone. It's loose at center. Moving up quickly is Brian Mullen. He's onside. Comes in on Barrasso. Pulls it. Shot it wide. Brian Mullen steps off the end boards, but Barrasso is out to handle the puck. Aims at six aside now as the penalties have expired. The play in the Pittsburgh zone, but Molokov couldn't chop it. Here comes Mario Lemieux. Lemieux on Vasquez. Ties him up. The centering pass picked off by Brian Mullen. Mullen trying to clear the zone. Does. Hogue brings it towards center ice. Hogue. Got checked. The Penguins made it to the line where Vasquez cleared it right back. Now Shell Samuelson dumps it in. Hogue goes for the puck. Pass it around to the open side of the ice. On to the stick of Claude Loisel through center. Under two minutes to play. Loisel into the Pittsburgh zone. It's checked, and there's Fitzgerald to cover the point. Oh, Samuelson plays it up the boards. Ariel Lemieux dropped it back, gets it in return. He spotted Shell Samuelson. He's forced to dump the puck in, talk it after it. So is Group. Group ends up behind the net. Hangs it off the boards. Not out. Ramsey with a shot. That went wide. To the right point, Shell Samuelson on loads. It's blocked in front. Group trying to clear it, could not. Joey Mullen plays it to the side of the goal. Healy's got that. Down goes Tockett. He had reached for the puck, was off balance, and fell down. And the crowd thinks that Pilon took some liberties with him. But one minute and 22 seconds is what we have showing on the clock in regulation time. And the fans are starting to throw debris on the ice. Well, that's probably in the best interest of the Islanders. These fans are not thinking very well. The Pittsburgh Penguins with territorial advantage putting some heat on. So now it gives Al Arbor time to rest his team, kill the momentum that Pittsburgh was building. You see Tockett as he gets flattened by Rich Pilon. There's 47, Pilaw. Tockett is very tired. He's been on the ice now for well over two minutes. And this late in a hockey game, it's a lot. So let's say clean up the debris. We'll just search back a little bit. The Penguins in 1989 swept the Rangers in four straight in the opening round and then lost in seven to the Philadelphia Flyers in the division final. That We're dealing with post Mario if you want. In 1990, they didn't make the postseason dance. And in 91, they beat the Devils in seven. And the Caps for the Patrick Division title then went through Boston and Minnesota to win the Stanley Cup. Last season, it took seven games to eliminate the Capitals in the opening round. And the Rangers in six. And Tom Barrasso's goaltending, very instrumental in a sweep of both the Boston Bruins and the Chicago Blackhawks. Taking a long time here, Jigs, to get a crew out onto the ice to clean up all of the garbage that these fans have pitched out there. They're just now getting out here. And 
and the debris is scattered all over the end zone where the Islanders have been working a minute and 22 seconds left in regulation time. The Pittsburgh playoff story going back to 1970, they beat Oakland in four games and lost to St. Louis in six. In 72, they were swept by Chicago. In 75, they beat St. Louis in a best of three series and lost, as you know, to the Islanders in game seven of that quarterfinal. In the following year, they lost the preliminary round to Toronto, two games to one. Same story in 1977. But in 79, they beat Buffalo two games to one in a best of three prelim, lost four straight to Boston in the second round. At 80, lost the first round, best of five to the Bruins. 81, they lost the opening round in overtime in game five at St. Louis. And in 82, lost in overtime, game five opening round against the Islanders and the rest that we mentioned post Mario. And there is number 66. One minute, 22 seconds. In regulation time, the Islanders lead three to two. Everybody in this building that's still here is going to be looking to Lemieux to try and get the equalizer. The Islanders have to be smart. Minute and 22 seconds. You've got to know it'll be a full court press. Whether they start, I imagine Barrasso will be on the ice up near the bench until after the puck is dropped. They'll want to get him off the ice as quickly as possible. But all of the, with all of the happenings, Kevin Stevens hurt at the beginning of the hockey game. That's not a reason for the Pittsburgh Penguins not beating the Islanders at this point. The Pittsburgh goal will be empty. Barrasso takes a seat on the bench. Face-off will be to the right of Glenn Healy. Al Arbor has Claude Loisel, Brad Delgarno, and Tom Fitzgerald out as the forwards. With Darius Kasparitis and Yui Krupp on defense. For Pittsburgh, Francis in the middle. Tocca to his right, Mullen to his left. Yager is up there with Lemieux covering the left point. They get the puck back to Lemieux. He shoots Healy the save. A scramble in front. Healy controls it. He got a whack across the top of the helmet, he indicates. But the puck safely between his legs. Again, Ron Francis with an important face-off. He got it to the right guy, Mario Lemieux. Lemieux didn't shoot it hard. He was looking more for the deflection. There's the pass. There's the deflection. The stop by Healy off Yager. And the loose puck. Healy is able to finally get a hold of it. And all that took only four seconds off the clock. Francis and Fitzgerald again. Reed Knox drops the puck, it bobbled on Mario Lemieux, and he has to go back for it. Over to Murphy, they get the zone cleared out. Murphy dumps it in, Yager chasing it. Yager goes back in the net, squeezed into the boards by Tom Fitzgerald. Joey Mullen centers it back. Larry Murphy at the blue line, up the slot, he scores! mark of the third period it's 3-3 at Pittsburgh that's got to tell you something Jake. great teams find ways to do great things this team Pittsburgh is slowly getting to be a great team they look like an ordinary team until about five minutes ago they forced the Islanders back they got the goal by Francis I think Francis may have gotten this one as well but they kept the Islanders in their end of the ice they won two important face-offs. Ron Francis won both of them, and Mario Lemieux was at the blue line. That was the shot by Murphy deflected in front. It could have been Tockett. There's Murphy. What a game he's had for Pittsburgh. There's the pass. There's the deflection by Ron Francis. The puck behind Healy. And the game is tied. One minute remaining in the third period. Well, with Carrasso on the bench, those who stayed have reason to celebrate. Carbon copy, Jake. Francis gets the goal. Murphy gets the assist. He, he'll probably have two assists on this. Or I should say Murphy gets one. They'll probably add another one. 
believe it was Ron Francis that made the pass back to Murphy. So it's a brand new hockey game, new life. Can you imagine the fans that have left this arena? They're in their cars on the way home. I wonder if they can get back in. We can only hope. As this still has more drama to unfold. Murphy shot. There's, there's the deflection. Healy, just the only thing he can do is try and stay in front of the puck. Try and hope that the puck will hit him. Look at Ron Francis. Hogue in the middle. Mullen for the Islanders and Volick as the wingers. Kasparaitis and Pilon on defense. Darius Kasparaitis up the boards, off the glass, out to center ice. Shell Samuelson, or excuse me, Alf Samuelson, didn't get it through center ice, and the Islanders have dumped it in. Alf pushed off the puck by Hogue. Ryan Mullen jabbing at it. It goes to David Volick. Volick shovels it around the end boards. Hogue, a wraparound, didn't get through. And it's cleared out of the zone by Mario Lemieux. Kasparaitis drops back off the boards, got it to the blue line. Murphy gave it away to Brian Mullen. Murphy got it back, gave it away to Hogue this time. He dumps it in. The editors slow to get the play back on side. In 19 seconds, the horn will sound to end the third period. And as Vasky slaps the puck in on behalf of the Islanders. And Murphy over on the right clears it to Joey Mullen with 10 seconds left. He's dumped it to the Islander line, and a delayed offside, not called, Fitzgerald has dumped it down the ice, and game seven couldn't have a more dramatic finish than what we'll be in for tonight. We'll go to overtime to decide the Patrick Division title. What more could you ask for if you're a hockey fan? Go the limit. Scotty Bowman, he's been there before with hockey teams. Al Arbor's been there, and these Pittsburgh Penguins as they leave the ice, Quite an ovation. Some of the Islanders that haven't had a lot of ice time, Pierre Turgeon, Mick Makota, all getting a little extra skating in in case they need them in the overtime period. Two before the midway point of the period for Al Arbor's team, and they led three to one. Two in the last three minutes and 47 seconds of regulation, and the Penguins have tied it at 3-3. Sudden death overtime is an intermission away the Islanders and the Penguins tied 3-3, and will the championship will go to overtime. Tied 3-3, and for Mobile, here is the game summary. The opening period was scoreless tonight. Pittsburgh did have a wide territorial edge. They did lose Kevin Stevens through an injury and a collision with Rich Pilon, and Mario Lemieux hit the crossbar and a breakaway, but it was scoreless after one. In the second, Ulf Samuelson scores his first of the playoffs from Shell Samuelson and Mario Lemieux at 7.59. And the Penguins made that lead stand for just a little more than 11 minutes. Then Steve Thomas scores from Benoit Hogue. Thomas with his sixth and 26th overall. And the Islanders and Penguins were tied 1-1 going to the third period. David Vonick on a setup by Ray Ferraro scores at the 6-10 mark after Tom Fitzgerald had nudged the puck out of the zone and the Islanders 2-on-1 take the lead. Benoit Hogue extends the lead at 9:09. Hogue's fourth playing 4-on-4 hockey at the time. Molokov and Healy assist, and the Islanders appeared very comfortable up 3-1. to one. They maintained that lead until 16-13 when Ron Francis scored from Larry Murphy with the teams again playing four-on-four four after penalties to Krupp and Lemieux. And with goaltender Tom Barrasso on the bench for the extra attacker, Pittsburgh won back-to-back -back draws, and finally Francis deflects Larry Murphy's shot by Glenn Healy. Joey Mullen got an assist on the goal at the 19-minute mark of the third period to tie the game 3-3. The shot summary for Mobile, 19-7, Penguins in the first period, 7-4 in the middle period, and 16-6 in the third for a margin of 42 shots on goal for Pittsburgh to 17 for the Islanders. The Islanders are 0-2 for 2 on the power play. The Pittsburgh Penguins are 0-3, of 3 and the game is tied 3-3. Well, folks, I hope you've got lots of videotape in your cassette. If you don't have a cassette in the machine, if you uh, want to record something very special, we are going to have just one of the greatest features of, for Islander fans ever. We're going to go back beginning on the 11th of April, 1975, when the very first Islander overtime goal was scored by J.P. Parisi, and we'll finish it up with an overtime goal that has been scored in the series of 93. Every playoff overtime goal ever scored by a New York Islanders player will be seen when we return following this word.
I'm tied 3-3. We're in the intermission awaiting the overtime at Pittsburgh as promised. All 28 Stanley Cup playoff goals in overtime ever scored by a New York Islander. And here they come, beginning with J.P. Parisi at Madison Square Garden in 1975. Twenty-eight of them. And in just a little while, we'll find out if we add a 29th. Or do the Pittsburgh Penguins extend their run 
and win the Patrick Division Championship. 3-3 is the score at Pittsburgh, awaiting overtime. The Pittsburgh Civic Arena, that is. It's a 3-3 tie, and the Islanders and the Pittsburgh Penguins will be out to break that. Before they come out, though, Mobile would like to show you the highlights of the third period that sent this game into overtime. The Islanders, they struck first in the third period. Ray Ferraro to David Volick, and a beautiful shot by David Volick into the short side. And the Islanders at 6-10 had a 2-1 lead. Ferraro and Tommy Fitzgerald assisting on David Volick's first playoff goal this season. Then Benoit Hogue, as he comes up the ice, opted to let it go. The puck deflected, flipped over, hit the goaltender Barrasso, trickled across the goal line, and a comfortable two-goal lead for the Islanders. Molikoff and Healy assisting on Benoit Hogue's goal. It's for his fourth of the playoffs. But then Pittsburgh started to gear it up. They pushed the Islanders back into their own end of the ice. They forced the Islanders, Glenn Healy, time and again to make save after save. And here with a quick shot, Ron Francis converted a fast pass from Larry Murphy. And that brought the Pittsburgh fans to their feet. And it brought the Pittsburgh Penguins within one of the Islanders. And then with the goaltender pulled, this shot by Larry Murphy. It deflected there off the stick of Francis and then apparently off the stick of Rick Tockett, number 22. We understand that Tockett now has been awarded the goal. Either way, it was the tying goal with one minute left to go in the game. And we're now getting ready for overtime. Get a look at Ron Francis. You think of all of the players on the Pittsburgh team that could step up and score goals and set them up. The defensive specialist, Ron Francis, led the Pittsburgh Penguins late in the third period. The all-time overtime record for the New York Islanders, 28 wins, 7 losses in 35 overtime games. For the Pittsburgh Penguins, 8 victories, 5 defeats, 13 overtimes. The last time they played overtime was here, May 17th of 92. This for the right to face the Montreal Canadiens for the conference title. If the Islanders win, it'll be in Montreal for game one on Sunday afternoon. If the Penguins win, game one is here on Sunday afternoon. No matter which, you'll see the action on ABC Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Talk it with his seventh of the playoffs from Francis and Murphy to tie the game at the 19-minute mark of the third period is official now. Referee Andy Van Halleman waving Al Arbor to speed it up. Scotty Bowman doesn't have a team out on the ice yet. Now out comes Lemieux, Francis, and Mullen with Ramsey and Murphy while the Islanders have already stated their case. Benoit Hogue is in the middle. Steve Thomas on the right. Ryan Mullen on the left. The two Mullen, shoulder to shoulder. Elon and Kasparaitis on the Allender defense. Hogue won the draw on Kasparaitis. Handles it here with a pass. Off Brian Mullen into the Pittsburgh zone. Tom Barrasso to play it through Murphy. Up over the head of Brian Mullen and it skitters all the way down into the Allender zone. Richard Pilon to Hogue. Back into Pilon and through him, Kasparaitis goes back in the net to recover the puck. Up the boards to Brian Mullen. Didn't get it out. Murphy with a shot that took off and went wide. Steve Thomas. Touched it outside the line, and the Penguins shoot it right back in. They get the play on side here, and Pilon banks it off the boards, out towards center. Hogue chasing it into the Pittsburgh zone. Murphy over to knock it loose. Thomas can't control it. Ramsey does, but Molikoff, who has just come out, plays it to Hogue. Benoit Hogue fakes once. Got Ramsey turned around. Hogue off the far corner, shoots off the... Off Tippett, I believe. Did it hit the pipe, too? Hogue centers, Brian Mullen is jammed off the puck and it ends up in the seats. First big chance goes to the Islanders. Boy, what a good opportunity. I believe it did get off the goalpost to the right of Tom Barrasso, Jake. The puck stayed fairly lively. Let's take a look. Good moves here by Benoit Hogue. Grabbed the puck, fake Ramsey to the ice, turned, dished it to the front of the net. It hit one of the Islanders in front. Brian Mullen 
And then I believe it could have hit the post. Maybe we could get a better look. There's the play off Mullen. No, it did not get to the goal post. It hit Mullen. You see Tippett take Mullen down as the Pittsburgh Penguins clear the puck into the seats. Face off to the left of the net. Rosso watches as Francis steps in to face off with Ferraro. King is on the left, Follick on the right. Ferraro won the draw, but has played it outside the zone, and that's Volokov chasing it back. Tockett moves up to forecheck. Vasky steps in front of him, is grabbed by Tockett, as Volokov comes around the boards, hits solidly by Tippett. Volokov right back on Tippett, who hits the deck. Send two men into forecheck in the outer zone. Back to the net they go. Tockett a wraparound, gets knocked off his skates, and Volokov plays it up the boards. Didn't get it out. Canada's chase it deeper in the zone. They got away from Healy. Comes right out in front of Volley. Little too wide open for Islander fans at the moment, I would think. Penguins dump the puck in. Healy leaves it for Monica. Lasky takes it back to the net. Trying to get it to Volley. It's loose on the boards. Knocked away from Monica. Here's Lemieux centering, but right to Dennis Vasky. On to Derek King. King slaps it in hard. Rosso to play it, down at center ice, Lemieux waiting for it, Mullen up on the play with him. Mario dropped it to Murphy, in front to Mario Lemieux, he pulls the trigger and shot it over the net. Murphy on the far boards, back to the goal, but Troop steps in, lost it, Murphy went to the front of the net, but Lemieux centering pass didn't get there. Up comes Claude Loisel, on to Ray Ferraro, is there one more hero? For Rosso the save, loose puck is picked up by Francis. Francis cleared the zone, Troop with it at center to Delgarno. On to Loisel, over the line, but offside as Ferraro had been trapped inside the Pittsburgh zone. What a defensive move by Huey Crew. Mario Lemieux left around the front of the Islander net, went to the backhand, and here's the play up to the center ice area. Mario Lemieux comes across the Islanders line, drop pass to Murphy, return to Lemieux. Watch Huey Crew come in out of nowhere. Here he comes, look at the stick, he's got it out there, and he deflected. He deflected the backhand scoring attempt by Mario Lemieux up over the net. Here's the Islanders right back. Beautiful scoring attempt. Benoit Hogue, there's the rebound. Ron Francis back to pick up the loose puck. Face off outside the Pittsburgh blue line. For two minutes and 21 seconds into sudden death. Sudden victory. You decide. Outside at the Islander blue line as Francis was up ahead of Yager, the puck carrier. Couple of great exchanges early in the overtime period. We just got underway. Two minutes, 28 seconds has been played. Tom Barrasso, couple of stops. One off Mullen, one off Benoit Hogue. Healy got some help from Huey Krupp on an attempt by Mario Lemieux. Francis in the middle. Joey Mullen on the right, Mario Lemieux on the left. The Islanders have shot the puck in from their side of center. Icing called here. It's Fitzgerald with Loizel and Delgarno for the Islanders. Elon and Kasparitis on defense. Someone just talking about this being a barn burner, I would get the feeling that the barn is already burnt and the crops are on fire. This thing is really roaring. If you've just joined us, the game was scoreless after 20 minutes and was 1-1 at the end of the second after the Penguins had taken the lead. The Islanders led 3-1 just after the nine-minute mark of the third period and held that lead past the 16-minute mark of the 20-minute third period. And the Penguins got two to send it to sudden death overtime. Yager to Francis to the point. Murphy with a shot that stayed wide. Comes off the end boards. Fitzgerald lifts it up off the glass. Knocked down. Mario Lemieux with a shot. Hit the post. Francis on the rebound. Puts it out in front. That comes bouncing off some skates, and Murphy is able to play it to the boards. Delgarno gets it out to Loisel. On to Fitzgerald. Tommy Fitzgerald met solidly by Ramsey. Francis takes the pass from Lemieux. Big drive. Glove saved by Healy as Yager went to the front of the net. What an outstanding job by Glenn Healy. Jigs, that one you talked about, the post. 
That was shot so hard, Healy made a pad save and the puck come bouncing back as if it had hit the goal post. And there with Ron Francis bearing down. Here's the play, there's the shot by Lemieux, screenshot. There's the kick save by Glenn Healy, a beauty. And then just after that, Ron Francis gets an opportunity coming down the left wing side and his ripping shot. Glenn Healy is able to glove it. Here's Francis with time. What a blast. Healy, he picked it off. The puck appeared to be almost by him. Each team has had two shots on goal in overtime. Here's some of the action. There's the pass to Ron Francis. Good stop. That's Jeremy Yager looking for a loose puck in front of Glenn Healy. Dave Tippett on the faceoff for the Penguins. Benoit Hogue for the Islanders. Hogue has Loisel and Thomas with him. Hogue turns on Tippett. The Penguins get it back. Oh, Samuelson shot right on. Healy makes the save and then covers the puck with the catching glove as the Penguins crash the front of the net. Again, Glenn Healy. Good stop. Controlled the rebound. He got to it just in time. Pittsburgh winning another faceoff. Daniels back to the point. Here's the shot. Healy able to get a look at it at the last second, and you see him covering the rebound. Tippett is on top of him. 20 is Jeff Daniels. Lysel wins the faceoff from Tippett this time, and Vasky backhands it up high down into the Pittsburgh zone, well wide of the net. Icing will be called against the New York Islanders. Pittsburgh doing the same thing to the Islanders now, Jake, that they did at the end of the third period. They've kept the Islanders in their own end of the ice. The Islanders are having to ice the puck to relieve the pressure. But that just brings the faceoff back into their end of the ice where Pittsburgh want to operate from. Can't continually do that. Pittsburgh have too much talent up there. Bombing shots in from the point. Francis, Lemieux, Yager all in front of the net. How about... Joey Mullen with the fast hands. And that's who they've got out there right now. Francis, Joey Mullen, and Mario Lemieux after the player change. Ramsey on the left point, Murphy on the right. Loisel with Thomas and Hogue, and Claude Loisel will take the draw with Ron Francis. Vasky and Molikoff, the defense combination. Loisel won the draw, and Vasky got to the puck before Francis could get there. It's loose. Claude Loisel. On to Steve Thomas, Hogue with him. Thomas over the line, can't get around Ramsey, reaches around him, didn't make contact with the puck. Now it comes to the near side, back to the point for Vasky. Vasky shot, got through and just wide. Molikoff bangs it toward the corner boards. Here's Steve Thomas, Ramsey takes him off the puck. Up comes Mario Lemieux, on to Murphy. Murphy to Joey Mullen. Mullen checked in the outer zone, Benoit Hogue recovers the puck. He's given it to Brian Mullen. Over the Pittsburgh line, looking at Ulf Samuelson to Hogue. Ulf Samuelson broke up the play, and Lemieux gets it to Yager. Back to Francis. Into the Islander zone. Francis to Yager for a shot that went wide. Ryan Mullen takes it. Down the boards toward Huey Krupp. Krupp up to Thomas. Thomas trying to get it to Hogue, but he was checked. And it'll be another icing call against the New York Islanders. He played four minutes and 23 seconds of sudden death overtime. Penguins have had three shots on Glenn Healy's net. The Islanders have tested Scotty Bowman's goaltender, Tom Barrasso, twice in only 19 times through regulation and four minutes and 23 seconds of overtime. All for another Tums. All for <laughs> another whatever. The winner plays Montreal for the conference championship. Be interesting to see whether or not Al Arbor uses Pierre Turgeon in the overtime. Right now, he saw his team in a little trouble as Jogger went to the front of the net, but the Islanders regained control, and Bollock, Ed Loisel, poked it to center ice. Alf Samuelson shoots it down the boards. This time, Pittsburgh will be called for icing. Out in the ice for the Islanders, Ferraro, Bollock, and King. Kasparitis on one side of the defense and Richard Pilon on the other. One of the problems you get into thinking about Pierre Turgeon is the fact that he has not skated now for well over an hour. 
and that does not bode well when you have got an injured shoulder. His shoulder obviously not 100%. To put him in now could mean that if you do win, you could lose him for the next series. So that's a tough decision to have that much talent sitting on the bench, not being able to use it. Pittsburgh getting Tippett. Lemieux out there together with Ron Francis. Looked into the face of Ray Ferraro. Playoff hero of the series with the Washington Capitals along with Brian Mullen in game one. Game two as it was, but the first of the three overtime games. Ferraro and Francis here. Draw pulled back by Francis. Shell Samuelson from back in the net. To Mario Lemieux off his stick. Right to Vasky who shoots it back in. Barrasso out to play it. He'll leave it behind the net for Alfi. Up the boards toward Ron Francis. Ross Ice, there's Tippett into the Islanders zone. Lemieux jumps up on the play. Pulls the trigger and it just went wide. Gary King gets it to the line. Came right back to King. Ross Ice intended for Molikoff. Alt Samuelson can't feed it to Lemieux cleanly. David Volick spots Ferraro moving up. Ferraro looks to Volick off right wing. He shoots. He scores! Islanders win in overtime. They're off to Montreal for the conference championship. David Volick's second goal of this game. 5-16 of sudden death overtime. What a story David Volick has turned out to be. Peck's bad boy all season long. Al Arbor wouldn't use him. Forced to use him here in the playoffs. Spotted duty, and then he steps up big. He got the goal that got the Islanders the first lead in the third period, and here in overtime, David Volick with a one-timer has beaten Tom Barrasso. A stunned, I mean totally stunned crowd here at the Civic Arena. No chance to three-peat. You see the handshake. Ray Ferraro and Ron Francis, a dramatic picture. And then you saw Mario, there's Yager, there's Ray. Former teammate Dave Tippett. What a gutty, gutty performance by the New York Islanders of 93. Boy, they wouldn't quit. There's Zoe Krupp and Mario Lemieux. As Lemieux works his way down, David Volick, Glenn Healy. There's a story. Mario Lemieux couldn't beat Glenn Healy. When he had to, Healy has to be the story of the New York Islanders in the East playoffs. What a job he has done. Time and again, you would understand if the puck got behind him, but he just, like his teammates in front of him, wouldn't quit, wouldn't let that thing get beyond him. As it turns out, each team had three shots on goal in overtime. But it's David Volick. Getting the game winner, Glenn Healy. Got to be the number one star of this game, I would think. Uh, if not number one, certainly 1B. Well, when you think of the goal, look at the pass Ray Ferrero laid out. A beauty. David Volick one-timing it. What a blast by Volick. He ripped it into the top of the net. Watch the bench here. Look at this happiness as it springs loose. The Islanders watched a two-goal lead disappear. Look at the coaching staff. Look at them all up on the bench. Al Arbor watches his young Islanders not quit. Keep going. Be patient. They gave up a two-goal lead in the third period, watched it disappear in two minutes and 47 seconds, but they've won it in overtime. The 40th playoff series for Al Arbor, his 30th series victory against 10 losses. In overtime, it's the New York Islanders four, the Pittsburgh Penguins three, the Islanders are the Patrick Division champions and go to Montreal to play.